2021 budget of the Department of Agrarian Reform. So I wish to acknowledge uh, our senators who are present. Uh, of course, the chairman of the Committee on Finance, uh, uh, Senator Angara, and of course, another vice chairman of the Committee on Finance, Senator Amy Marcos. And who else? Plana, no? Uh, uh, there is uh, Senator Bongo and uh, uh, Plana. Only three. I guess they're coming in later. Okay. So uh, we, was, we wish also to acknowledge our resource person, the Secretary of the Department of Agrarian Reform, Attorney John Castriciones, okay, and uh, the Undersecretary for Finance Management and Administration, Attorney Lucius Junjun Malsi, okay, uh, Board Member 3 and OIC Assistant Secretary for Legal Affairs, Attorney Jim Coleto, and uh, uh, the Director for Bureau of Land Tenure Improvement, Engineer Jose Joey Sumatra, and then uh, Director for Bureau of Agrarian Legal Assistance, Attorney Marjorie Ison, and the Director for Finance and Management Service, Aurita C. Ang, and the OIC Director for Policy and Research Service, Garland Laila A. Cuarteros. Okay. And of course, the Regional Director for Region 1, uh, Director Homer Tobias, uh, Region 2, Director Samuel Solomero. Region 3, Attorney Chris Celestina Tam. Region 4A, Rene Colo Director Rene Colocar. Region 4B, Director uh, Soraida Makadindang Alhad Chi. Okay. For Region 5, Engineer Arnel Dison. For Region 6, Attorney Sheila Enciso. For Region 7, Attorney Resti Osias. For Region 8, Ismael Ayayay. And uh, for Region 9, Attorney Ramon Madronal Jr. And Region Caraga, Attorney Yomid Des Villarreal. Okay. And namatay pala yung Regional Director mo sa Region 6, di ba, Secretary? Namatay. Siya ba yung naman? Aniya pala yung kala ko, ikaw. Ah, hindi po. Hindi po sa Nadar. Hindi po sa Tari. Oh, Katang Senator. Yung ano, Nia pala yun. Director ng Nia sa Region 6. Namatay. And of course, from the technical administrative staff, uh, Department of Legislative Liaison Specialist, External Affairs and Relations Service, Sheila Del Rosario Imperial and Department Legislative Liaison Specialist, External Affairs and Relations Service, Rowena Vasquez. And, uh, and Technical Support Staff, External Affairs and Relations Service, Gina Rose Laure. And of course, Planning Officer 3, Ruel Limbo, and uh, MISS Billet. Falcon and IT officer three Miss Ardell Sandal. Okay, that's all. Anyway, uh, we call this meeting to order, and uh, uh, this is the first public hearing of the Senate Committee on Finance, subcommittee B of which I chair. Today's public hearing. Uh, will tackle the proposed budget of the Department of Agrarian Reform for the fiscal year 2021. And of course, uh, uh, we have uh, we will now call on Secretary Castriciones to speak and present their proposed budget. Okay, thank you. Um, good morning, everyone. Uh, okay, so we will be presenting some slides, uh, Madam Chair. Uh, yes. And also, uh, okay, okay. May we know if uh, the uh, honorable members of the Committee on Finance uh, can already view the uh, PowerPoint presentation on the screen, please. Okay. 
Can I proceed, Madam Chair? Yes, of course. To the uh, honorable members of the Committee on Finance, to our distinguished senators who are now present, and to those joining us online, good morning to all of you. Thank you for this opportunity being given to the Department of Agrarian Reform to once again present for the consideration of this August and STEAM body a recommended fiscal year 2021 budget for our department. This proposed budget is meant to continuously pursue the mandate of our agrarian reform program as enshrined in our constitution, a social justice provision with an aim of equitably distributing agricultural lands to our landless farmers. A great reform program is not only distributing lands, but likewise include the provision of support services. Henceforth, we are committed to provide to our program stakeholders through this proposed budget, the provision of support services that aims to improve the productivity of the awarded agricultural, of agricultural lands and uplift the socio-economic conditions of agrarian reform beneficiaries. The DAR's main function of distributing land to qualified agrarian reform beneficiaries is categorically stated in Republic Acts number 6657, 8532, and 9700. The continuing authority of DAR to acquire, administer, distribute, and develop agricultural lands for agrarian reform purposes is supported by the Department of Justice Opinion Numbers 59 and 60, Series of 2013. Moreover, Section 21 of Republic Act 9700 provides that after the completion of the land acquisition and distribution component of the Comprehensive Agrarian Reform Program, the yearly appropriation shall be allocated fully to support services, agrarian justice delivery and operational requirements of the DAR and other CARP implementing agencies. President Rodrigo Roa Duterte has given a directive for us to complete land distribution within his term and has also mandated the coverage of government-owned lands by the DAR for agrarian reform purposes. For the coverage of government-owned lands, Executive Order Number 75 was issued on February 15, 2019. We therefore take this opportunity to ask the honorable members of the Committee on Finance to favorably consider our 2021 proposed budget to enable us to meet the directives of our president. Uh, may we, next slide, please. In the 10-point socioeconomic agenda of President Duterte, the importance of the agrarian reform program can be traced into two points. One, promote rural and value chain development toward increasing agricultural and rural enterprise productivity and rural tourism. And number six, ensure security of land tenure to encourage investments and address bottlenecks in land management and titling agencies. Next slide, please. Following the pronouncement and directives. Next slide, please. Following the pronouncement and directives of the President toward the completion of land acquisition and distribution during his term, and in pursuit of the goal to equitably distribute lands to our tillers, the DAR has prepared a proposed budget responsive to the current needs and policy directions of the Department. Our proposed 2021 budget has been informed, guided, and prepared using the following planning parameters. Land Tenure Security Program. Land distribution is the main mandate of the DAR. In the succeeding slides, may I present to you the land acquisition and distribution accomplishments of our department as of June 2020. From 1972 to June 2020, DAR was able to cover a total of 4.826 million hectares to 2.894 million agrarian reform beneficiaries. The net accomplishment of our land acquisition and distribution of land is comprised of the following. 56% or 2.7 million hectares are private agricultural lands or PAL, which while 44% or 2.1 million hectares are non-PAL. Of these land holdings, 1.84 million hectares or 38% are land bank of the Philippines compensable, 
and 2.98 million hectares are non-land bank of the Philippines compensable. During the term of President Duterte from July 2016 until June 2020, the DAR was able to acquire 122,290 hectares of land issued with registered emancipation patents and certificates of land ownership awards. Of these covered land holdings, 168,238 hectares were distributed to agrarian reform beneficiaries and 83,103 of these ARBs were already installed. For the past four years, around 30,600 hectares have been the average annual accomplishment for land, with the highest accomplishment reported in 2017. It is worthy to note that in the second half of 2016, that is from July to December, the DAR was able to accomplish 20,901 hectares despite the period of transition that happened with the change of administration and leadership in the DAR. This slide also shows the summary of land distribution in 2018. A total of 28,501 hectares were covered with registered EPs and CLOAs and issued to a total of 41,787 ARBs during that year. This accomplishment is equivalent to 99% of the target for the year of 42,162 ARBs. Of the ARBs awarded, with EP was 27,465 ARBs or 66% were installed to their awarded lands. In terms of area, the aggregate area covered by the EP was is 60,777 hectares. This accomplishment exceeded the target for the year of 46,644 hectares by as much as 30.30%. For the year 2019, the DAR was able to meet a 78% accomplishment for EP CLOA registration with a total of 32,241 hectares covered out of the 41,077 hectares target that benefited 20,621 ARBs. On the other hand, the actual distributed lands to ARBs in 2019 totaled to 67,072 hectares benefiting 51,220 ARBs. Out of these ARBs awarded with EP CLOAS, 33,119 ARBs or 65% were actually installed. For the first half of calendar year 2020, the DAR was able to distribute 12,792 hectares to 9,043 recipients ARBs or 61% of the annual target in terms of area and 46% in terms of ARBs. In addition, there were a total of 286,964 hectares covered with EP CLOAS from the Land Bank of the Philippines that were turned over to the DAR in 2019 and 2020 by virtue of DAR Memorandum Circular Number no. 5, Series of 2019, and the same were distributed benefiting 365,169 ARBs. The historical trend of DAR's land accomplishment picks up at the last two quarters of the year, wherein the land process reaches its completion for most of the targeted land holdings. Hence, we are confident that our land accomplishment will increase and even surpass our 2020 target at the year end. Next slide, please. As regards the status of our land balance, starting January 2020, the DAR had a beginning balance of 523,092 hectares. Presented in the slide before you are the components of the land balance with 92% covering private agricultural lands at 483,612 hectares. The biggest chunk of the land balance is composed of compensable lands at 459,025 hectares or 88% of the balance, of which 337,440 hectares or 65% is under compulsory acquisition. The remaining 64,067 hectares of the land balance is non-LBP compensable, lands at 12% 12, 12 of the total. 
Our efforts to accelerate the coverage of DARS' remaining land balance is geared towards its completion by the year 2022, as directed by President Rodrigo Roa Duterte to this humble representation. In addition, the President directed us to fast-track the issuance of individual Certificate of Land Ownership Awards through continued acquisition and distribution of private agricultural lands, as well as parcelization of land holdings previously issued with Collective GLOAS. Along this trust, the DAR was able to work on the approval of the World Bank-funded project SPLIT, or support to parcelization of lands for individual titling this July 2020, with a project duration until 2023. It starts, it starts, startup activities are ongoing while still waiting for the release of funds for that purpose. Aside from distributing the remaining PALS, the DAR is committed to continuously cover government-owned lands suitable for agriculture with the issuance of Executive Order Number 75 in 2019, which I have earlier mentioned, all departments, bureaus, offices, and instrumentalities of the government are directed to identify lands owned by the government devoted to or suitable for agriculture for distribution to qualified beneficiaries under the CARP program. Under EO 75, the DAR is mandated to provide central direction and coordination with the other government agencies and instrumentalities to ensure its effective implementation. The configuration of the land balance by region. Your Honours, the slide before you shows the regional location of the remaining 523,092 hectares land acquisition and distribution balance as of January 2020. The bulk of the area is in Region 6, with 124,450 hectares, followed by 107,802 hectares in the barm covered areas. The next big concentration of flood balance is in the Bicol region, or Region 5, and in Region 8. Now let's go to the inventory of government-owned lands under EO 75. With the issuance of Executive Order Number 75, the DAR has finally identified a total of 217,120 hectares gross area under the jurisdiction of 14 different government agencies. Transferring these subject land holdings suitable for agriculture is very, is very challenging, Your Honours. By this time, only the Technical Education and Skills Development Authority had executed a deed of transfer in favor of DAR over 289 hectares located in the Vau de Oro. By the way, only recently or a week, a month ago, there was also a deed of transfer that was duly executed by the Cagayan State University. And uh, uh, with all the efforts being exerted by our officials in Region 2, uh, by the end of this year, we will be able to distribute these government-owned lands. The other agencies are not being cooperative. However, the DAR remains steadfast in covering these goals to comply with the directive of the president, even to the extent of employing legal remedies. Next slide, please. With regards to the support to parcelization of lands for individual titling or the split project, as I have earlier mentioned, Your Honours, our President has also directed our Department to fast-track the issuance of individual CLOAS that includes the parcelization of land holdings previously issued with collective CLOAS. This directive shall be addressed with the implementation of the newly approved split project under the World Bank funding. It has four-year project duration and the following features. A total of 1,380,420 1, hectares nationwide will be parcelized and issued with individual land titles to benefit around 1,140,735 agrarian reform beneficiaries. This project has an approved cost of 24.625 billion pesos with 78% in loan proceed equivalent to 19.24 billion and 22% in uh, GOP counterpart, 
at 5.385 billion. It is projected to commence implementation in October 2020. Next slide. Next slide, please. Uh, land cost parameters for 2021. The cost to distribute land holdings under land acquisition and distribution is a summation of the peso value per activity or process involved, starting from claim folder documentation and preparation, land survey, land valuation, EP CLOA registration and distribution until the installation of ARBs uh, in their respective awarded land. Roughly in 2021, it would cost around 9,600 9, per hectare to acquire and distribute a land holding. Other LTSP cost parameters for 2021. This next slide shows the other cost parameters per activity or process under the land tenure security program for information and reference. Next slide, please. Now let's go to agrarian justice delivery. The primary objective of agrarian justice delivery as a core function of CARP is to arrive at a speedy, effective, fair, and just resolution of all agrarian disputes that hamper the land acquisition and distribution process. The provision of legal assistance to our farmer beneficiaries remains a major task of the department. We provide legal services in the settlement of disputes involving small farmers, particularly to our agrarian reform beneficiaries to ensure continuous ownership of their awarded lands. AGD is classified into two components. One, agrarian legal assistance, which, include, which includes agrarian law implementation, and number two, adjudication services or quasi-judicial functions. With regards to agrarian legal assistance, in general, it is concerned with the administrative resolution of agrarian law implementation cases, and an ALI case is an administrative matter involving disputes or controversies such as the identification of beneficiaries, exemption from coverage, and the like. In the implementation of the agrarian reform laws, which falls under the exclusive jurisdiction of the DAR secretary or his or her authorized representatives and the regional directors. This should also include alley cases covered by special administrative orders, such as but not limited to cases for exemption or exclusion from coverage and conversion, preferred cases and land transfer clearance. This includes representation of agrarian reform beneficiaries or farmers by the DAR lawyers and legal officers before the regular courts and the DAR adjudication board. In 2018, our legal team at DAR started to adopt the swift and efficient delivery of legal services, which aims to resolve pending and backlog cases. I also gave a directive that henceforth newly received cases should expeditiously be acted upon and resolved in a period not exceeding one year. From January to June 2020, a total of 19,689 cases under the Agrarian Legal Assistance Program were resolved by the DAR. This is 76% of the total case load of 25,743 cases. This leaves DAR with a total of 6,054 cases still for resolution until the end of 2020. In terms of adjudication of cases, a total of 6,270 cases were resolved by the DAR Adjudication Board and its various salas out of 9,408 case load. The performance result resulted to a resolution rate of 67% for the same period with a total of 3,138 cases pending for resolution. Next slide, please. The cumulative accomplishment of agra in agrarian justice delivery program as of June 2020 totals to 1,266,383 cases resolved by the DAR under its agrarian legal assistance program. This is equivalent to a resolution rate of 99.5% of its 
272,437 caseload. As of the end of June 2020, there remains only 6,054 cases for resolution. For the same period, the Dar Adjudication Board and its salas were able to resolve 589,854 cases out of its 592,992 case load, or a 99.5% case resolution rate. Only a total of 3,138 cases are for resolution as of the end of June 2020. Next slide. Now let's go to Agrarian Reform Program Beneficiaries Development and Sustainability Program. As a poverty reduction program, one of the goals of CARP is to transform the agrarian reform areas into vibrant and self-reliant communities that should serve as engine of rural agro-industrialization. Thus, the bigger challenge lies in sustaining the gains in land redistribution. The goal is translated into three bottom line objectives. One, to improve the productivity of awarded lands. Number two, to increase household incomes. And number three, to promote the well-being of the ARBs and their households. <clears throat> Excuse me. To achieve these objectives, the DAR implements the Agrarian Reform Program Beneficiaries Development and Sustainability Program. This program will ensure that the systematic and synchronized delivery of essential support services and facilities are provided to ARBs and help them maximize the productivity of distributed lands as well as harness the potentials of rural communities. Among the provisions of the Carper Law is the establishment of Agrarian Reform Communities, or ARCs. The ARC is DAR's strategy in delivering support services to Agrarian Reform beneficiaries in propelling development in Agrarian Reform areas. The strategy of establishing ARCs is in coordination with the local government units, non-government organizations, civil society organizations, community-based organizations, and people's organizations in congressional districts with a predominantly agricultural population. The ARCs are composed and managed by ARBs who were organized and undertaking the integrated development of their areas and their organizations. The ARC developed strategy has six major key result areas, namely land tenure improvement, organization management, economic and physical infrastructure support services, farm productivity and income, basic social services, and gender and development. As of June 30, 2020, a total of 2,231 ARCs were launched in 188 congressional districts involving 1,509,449 ARBs. This slide shows the distribution of the approved ARCs nationwide. Agrarian reform beneficiary organizations with interventions per region. Anchored on the principle of people empowerment under the ARC development strategy, the DAR enjoins the participation of the ARBs and other community members to have access and control of resources enabling them to effectively manage their own development. Along with this strategy, the DAR was able to organize and strengthen a total of 5,290 agrarian reform beneficiaries organizations, or ARBOS. These organizations have a total of 1,231,626 members composed of ARBs and other members of the community Whereas 650,270 are females, composing of 53%, and 581,366 are males, or 47%. For the first semester of 2020, a total of 17,906 ARBs were recruited as new members in the 185 newly organized and existing ARBOS. And as of June 2020, a total of 763,314 ARBs are already members of the ARBOS. Next slide, please. Now, 
the level of maturity of these cooperatives, our department continuously monitors the level of organizational maturity of our assisted ARBOS. The 2019 ITEMA or the IT enabled maturity assessment results on the level of maturity of the 5,290 ARBOS are presented in this slide. Almost 30% or about 1,562 ARBOS are in the higher level of development. And this belongs to the levels four and five. Wherein operational enterprises were established, organizational structures are firmed up and diversified services to their members are provided. On the other hand, 48.37% of the subjects of the subject A ARBOS, ARBOS are in the lower level of maturity or levels one and two, which still needs further interventions in the areas of organizational development and strengthening their capacity in the management of both organization and livelihood services. LITEMA is an instrument which measures The maturity of the Arbos, it uses smartphones with installed data entry applications which facilitate data gathering, verification and identification of the location of actual data gathering. Now let's go to the next slide with regards to the accomplishment in ARBDSP from 2019 June up to 2020. The accomplishment under the ARB Development and Sustainability Program as of June 2020 are shown in this slide. On ARB's train, a total of 467,890 were trained in 2019, an additional 197,521 ARBs in the first half of 2020. The focus of this intervention includes strengthening existing organizations, expanding membership, organization, organizing the ARBs in sync with land distribution, enhancing the capabilities of ARBs and ARBO leaders in managing profitable enterprises, skills development and adoption of appropriate technology. Gender concerns are integrated in the development interventions both at the ARB and ARBO level. For 2020, the training methodology adopted a blending learning scheme that includes webinar, online, and face-to-face -face sessions observing health and safety protocols. Next slide, please. ARBs with access to credit and microfinance services. For 2019, a total of 206,483 ARBs have access to the different credit and microfinance facilities available, such as the Agri Production Credit Program or the APCP, CAP PBD, Arise ARBs Afford, and Microfinance Development Corp Program. The DAR collaborates with the Land Bank of the Philippines in the implementation of CAP PBD, Arise, and Afford, while the APCP is being implemented in collaboration with the Department of Agriculture and the ACPC and the DNR. For the period January to June 2020, 41,418 ARBs were reported to have availed of the same credit facilities. Next slide, please. The ARBOS developed as microfinance provider. The intervention for ARBOS as conduit in the delivery of financial services for ARBs at the community level is on the soft component side, which include developing the capacity of leaders and management staff and installation of policies, systems, and procedures in the establishment and operationalization of bank-like operations of their microfinance services. A total of 1,539 ARBOS serve as the conduit of ARBs in their financial requirements for production and livelihood activities. Under the Agri-Production Credit Program, as of June 2020, the LBP has approved a total of 2.942 billion worth of credit lines 
to 885 organizations and defeating 68,939 ARB farmers. These ARBOs were able to access financial assistance for an average of three credit cycles. Total loans released reach 8.3 billion. ARBOs provided with three or more services. For the year 2019, 3,547 ARBOs were recipients of services from the DAR, which include technical assistance, enterprise development and provision of farm machineries, equipment and post-harvest facilities. From January to June 2020, a total of 601 ARBOs were recipients of the same services. Next slide, please. Farm machineries and equipment provided. This slide enumerates the type of farm machineries and equipment our department has provided to the ARBOS from 2017 until June 2020. There are a total of 3,805 units of farm machineries and equipment and a common service facilities procured and distributed by the DAR, both at the field offices and the central office in the past three and a half years. These FMEs and CFEs, CSF, were distributed to a total of 1,588 ARBOS and benefited 142,305 ARBs nationwide. There remains 1,144 FMEs for distribution by the field offices in the second half of 2020. The 256 FMEs procured at the central office include 162 units of 35 horsepower four-wheel drive tractor, 54 units of 90 horsepower four-wheel drive tractor, 33 units rice combined harvester, and seven units of grubber and loader. Next slide, please. Accomplishments relative to Bayanihan to Hill and As One Act. The devastating effect of the COVID-19 pandemic prompted the passage of RA number 11469 or the Bayanihan to Heal as One Act to address the impact of the pandemic in the lives of the ARBs. The DAR launched a project that would assist the ARBs during the difficult time. Next slide, please. The pass over, our bold move for the deliverance of our farmers from COVID-19 pandemic or the Arbol project. The DAR started implementing the Arbol project in May 2020, and it covers the provision of, number one, support to Arbos as frontliners for food security, farm productivity, assistance to ARBs that include seeds and farm tools, number three, livelihood support for women in crisis situations, and four, provision of food and non-food items. As of June 2020, the Arbol project has involved 1,214 ARBOS in ARBOS, provided farm productivity assistance to 90,839 ARBs, livelihood support for 1,200 women in crisis situation, and provided food and non-food packs to 124,448 ARBs. The 300.836 million funding allocation of ARBOL project is internally generated from the budget of the different programs, activities, and projects under the ARB DSP. Next slide, please. At the start of the declaration of the enhanced community quarantine, even prior to the implementation of the ARBOL project, the DAR took initiative to help our ARBs nationwide. We want them to feel that the government is working and ready to give them support. Given the urgency to respond to the ARBs and with only limited logistics available during the lockdown, DAR selected only those who were recently awarded with EPICLOAS from 2010 to 2019 on the assumption that they are still at the early stage of land development and farm production hence more vulnerable to the effects of the pandemic. Part of the package of our COVID-related services delivered was to provide marketing assistance to our ARBOS, favorably acting on our request 
the IAPF had passed resolution number 19, dated April 3, 2020, authorizing the DART to issue quarantine accreditation passes to ARBs to continue supplying agricultural products to critical areas affected by the ECQ. A total of 693 ARBOS were issued with QAPs, which enabled them to pass through the checkpoints and deliver their produce to intended markets. With the DARS assistance, the ARBs through their ARBOS were able to continuously sell their produce. A total of 1,214 ARBOS generated a total gross sales of 712.747 million or a weekly average sales of 340 ARBOS with 54.827 million gross sales from March to June 2020. The DAR also issued ARB IDs to 239,331 ARBs to ascertain their identity in their locality. This ID was used in availing support from other entities like the local government units and other national agencies like the DSWD, DA, and the, D, the DOLE. To avoid duplication in giving government assistance, we ensured that ARBs who were recipient of social amelioration program or other government agencies are no longer included in the list of the ARBOL project beneficiaries. Next slide, please. Sustainable and resilient agrarian reform communities. The ARC remains at the center of the development framework of the DAR to be able to provide accelerated, integrated, sustainable, and equitable delivery of extension services to farmers. These ARCs are envisioned to be sustainable agrarian reform areas where there are there is improved and sustainable land productivity for the agrarian reform beneficiaries. These ARBs in turn, are empowered by being members of Active Arbos, which are DAR's partner in pursuing the continued development of their awarded land. Next slide, please. Arbos engaged in rice production enterprise. There are a total of 1,383 ARB organizations nationwide, with 258,060 members that are engaged in rice production. Of these farmers, 110,000 394 are ARBs. The highest concentration is in Region 3 with a total of 229 ARBOS. Next is in Region 1 with 114 ARBOS with a total membership of 20,486 farmers. Next slide. ARBOS engaged in major crops production. Based on the data gathered by the DAR, the ARBOS engaged in major crops production nationwide are the following. 1,383 ARBOS in rice farming, 146 ARBOS in corn farming, and 79 ARBOS in sugar cane farming. Region 3 has the largest number of rice producing ARBOS. Next is Region 1, then Region 12, and Caraga Region. On corn production, Regions 12, 10, and 5 have the highest number of ARBOS engaged in planting Excuse me. Oil. Yes, ma'am. Excuse me. May I interject? How yes, come coconut is not included? Coconut. I think we have a report on that uh, later on, madam. Yeah, because uh, I think the biggest are rice and coconut with regards to ARB. So uh, I cannot... Uh, uh, understand why you included only rice, corn, and sugar cane when coconut is one of the biggest. It's second to rice. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Madam Chairman. Later on, uh, I think the last time that we met, uh, Madam, Madam Chair, uh, I think uh, you asked us for some data regarding uh, coconut. And uh, I think they, are, they have worked on it. So probably later on, they will give the information okay. uh, with regards to the data that have been gathered. Okay. Uh, may I continue, Madam? Yes, Madam yes, yes. Now, with regards to the average annual yield of major crops in ARCs, in 2019, the average crop yielded for irrigated palai and corn in agrarian reform communities registered 4.70 metric tons per hectare and 4.78 hectares per hectare in 
metric tons per hectare respectively. These are 0.73 metric ton hectares and 1.69 metric ton per hectare higher than the national average of 3.97 metric ton per hectares and 3.09 metric ton per hectare respectively. For all other crops, the average, the average yields in 2019 are lower than the national averages. Next slide. This slide shows of some of the products developed by our assistant Arbos that include processed food, products from their local produce, as well as non-food products that have been the source of additional income of the ARBs. Considering the increasing demand and emerging needs of the ARBs, particularly at this time of the pandemic where food security should be safeguarded, the DAR is determined to continue providing them support services, which we can deliver through the budget we are now presenting to this honorable body. Status of fiscal year 2019 fund utilization. The status of received allotment for 2019 and its utilization as of December 31, 2019 is presented in this slide. The DARS approval budget for fiscal year 2019 GAA amounts to 8.2 billion. There were additional allotments released from the DBM such as for personal services to cover salary, deficiencies, retirement and life insurance premium, and terminal leave benefits of our retirees in 2019, and legal defense fund availment. On the other hand, there are allotments that were not released by the DBM, such as for landowners' compensation. Our adjusted 2019 allotment, therefore, reached 8.798 billion pesos. Our total obligation incurred at year end reached 8.198 billion, or 93%, of adjusted allotment while disbursement reached 7.688 billion or 94% of the obligated allotment. There remains a 600 million pesos unobligated allotment from PS, 8.694 billion, MOOE, 5.066 million, and capital outlays, 86.284 million. The highest fund utilization was incurred for operations at 4.635 billion in terms of obligation, which is 97% of allotments and 4.387 billion disbursement or 95% of the incurred obligations for 2019. Under operations, the Land Tenure Security Program or LTSP is able to obligate 2.442 billion or 99% of its release allotment while its disbursement reached 2.374 billion, or 97% of obligated funds. Next slide, please. Fund utilization status of fiscal year 2019 continuing appropriations. The utilization of the 2019 continuing appropriations as of June 2020 is presented in this slide. The adjusted received allotments in 2019 is 497 million net of automatic appropriations and the amount of 100 million for the foreign assisted Italian project, which turned out to be unreleased by the DBM as of end of 2019. With the onset of the COVID-19 pandemic and the declaration of enhanced community quarantine in mid-March 2020, not much of the 2019 continuing fund was utilized. The obligations incurred out of the 2019 continuing allotment reach only 92 million pesos as of June 2020 or 20% utilization rate. The remaining unobligated allotment as of June 2020 was 440, 405 million pesos. Next slide, please. Implementation of NBC number 580. Among the provisions in the Bayanihan to Heal as one act, is the generation of funds to cover for the expenditures of the national government to address, to address the impact of the COVID-19 pandemic. The DBM National Budget Circular number 580 dated April 22, 2020 was issued to cover appropriations that expressly earmarked 
for the implementation of programs, activities, and projects addressing the COVID-19 pandemic. We circular mandated the discontinuance of 10% of fiscal year 2020, an obligated release allotment for MOE and CO as of March 31, 2020, and that 35% of the unreleased appropriation shall no longer be released effective April 1, 2020. It likewise directed the discontinuance of started and not started TOPS, which cannot be completed until December 2020. This slide shows the affected NBC number 580 deduction on the DARS release allotment amounting to 419 million pesos, equivalent to the 10% of our fiscal year 2020 release allotment. The DBM allowed that this amount be sourced from both the current and continuing allocations and obligated allotments as of March 31, 2020. Next slide, please. 10% deduction in 2020 allotment. The details of the 10% deductions per NBC number 580 in our 2020 release allotment and 2019 continuing appropriations from the MOE and CO across the programs and projects are shown in this slide. With a reduction of 490 million from the 8.622 billion allotment received in 2020 and the unobligated 2019 continuing fund, the adjusted allotment amounts to 7.696 billion for 2020 and 507 million for 2019 continuing fund or a total of 8.203 billion available funds in 2020. Next slide, please. The status of fiscal year 2020 fund utilization. The appropriation of the DAR per fiscal year 2020 amounts to 9.526 billion. This amount was reduced to the implementation of the NBC number 580, which I have earlier mentioned, Your Honors. The DAR's 2020 status of fund utilization as of June 2020 is shown in this slide. This report covers PS, MOE, and capital outlays based on the adjusted allotment 7.696 billion plus the, total, plus the allotment released from the automatic appropriations of 275 million or a total of 7.971 billion. The total obligation of DAR for the first semester of 2020 reached 3.360 billion or 42% of the 7.971 billion adjusted allotment. Under Fund 101, 3.184 billion was obligated from the total allotment of 7.186 billion or 44% utilization rate. Highest obligation was incurred in implementing our three major programs under operations at 2.144 billion, of which 1.235 billion or 58% was utilized for land tenure security program. Disbursement of Fund 101 as of June 2020 reached 2 billion, 2.913 billion or 91% of incurred obligations. 1.990 billion was disbursed for operations with 1.178 billion or 59% utilized for land tenure security program. As of the end of the first semester of 2020, total fund of 101, unobligated current allotments amounts to 4.002 billion. Bulk of these available funds is for LTSP at 1.486 billion and for Agrarian Reform Beneficiaries Development and Sustainability Program at 723 million pesos. As regards our budget for foreign assistance project under Fund 102, <coughs> excuse me, 36 billion was obligated out of the 510 billion current allotment. Disbursement, on the other hand, reached 33 billion. 474 billion unobligated allotment remains available for utilization, which is expected to be fully utilized by year end when all procurement requirements have been completed. Next slide, please. Details of fiscal year 2021 proposed budget per NEP. At this point, your honors, 
I will present the details of our proposed fiscal year. May I interject, please? Yes, yes madam. Yeah. I just want you to clarify that is what is that Fund 101 and Fund 102. Uh, okay. Are they, are they all foreign assisted? Fund 101 and 102? For a, for, more, uh, for a more specific accounting of uh, Fund 101 and 102, Madam, Madam Chair, may I call on you, Sec? Uh, we Jujun just want Malfi. to know what is Fund 101 and Fund 102. Yeah. Yes, yes, Madam Senator. Uh, you, Sec Malsi, can you please uh, address the query of our Chair, please? Yes, good morning, Madam Chair, Your Honours. Uh, fund 101 refers to the regular fund of the agency, Your Honor, and Fund 102 refers to the fund for foreign assistance projects, Your Honor. Oh, how come uh, you're separating it from the total budget, the the local budget? Uh, what differentiate it from the uh, foreign budget? Di ba yung local dapat kasama dun sa ordinary course of business, and then yung foreign lang ang maiiba? Ano ba yun? But hiniwalay niyo yung Fund 101 and Fund 102. I cannot understand that. Yes, we need distinguish lang po siya, Your Honor, uh, for purposes of separate accounting and reporting. Pero pag uh, pinapresent namin siya, a total budget po siya, uh, hinihiwalay lang namin po. So yung, yung Fund 101 is local and Fund 102 is foreign? Yes, Your Honor. I yun lang ang distinction. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Your Honor. Thank you, Mr. Secretary. May proceed, Madam Chair. Okay, can you can proceed. Uh, for fiscal year 2021, recommended our budget per NEP. For the fiscal year 2021, the recommended our budget from the regular appropriations as included in the fiscal year 2021 National Expenditure Program or NEP amounts to a total of 8.851 billion. As compared to fiscal year 2020, their budget of 9.526 billion in Daga, the total fiscal year 2021 their budget per NEP is lower by 7%. Original fiscal year 2021 their budget proposal. Before I proceed with the details of our fiscal year 2021 budget as included in the NEP, Please allow me to present the DARS original budget proposal for fiscal year 2021. It is anchored on complying with the directives of our president that of number one, fast tracking of land completion within his term, coverage of the available government owned lands suitable for agriculture for which EO 75 was issued this year, to parcelize land holdings previously issued with collective CLOAS for eventual issuance of individual CLOAS. The DAR proposed a 7.852 billion allocation for tier one, an additional tier two requirement of 25.114 billion or a total of 32.966 billion budget. The biggest additional location in tier two is for operations at 23.239 23 billion particularly for land tenure security program prompted by the desire of our depart department to comply with the directive of President Rodrigo Roa III. Related to the directive of parcelization of collective CLOAS, the DAR proposed an additional allocation of 15.694 billion for the project support to parcelization of land, lands for individual titling or the split project to augment the DBM recommended 500 million GOP counterpart fund and 2 billion proposed loan, proposed loan proceeds to be charged against the unprogrammed fund. The project can I ask a question, uh, Miss? Can I ask? Can I ask some clarification? Yes, ma'am. Uh, uh, this is your proposed budget. What is your target, ba, for distribution under this proposed budget? Because nakalagay dito land tenure security program ang malaki, uh, uh, parang eighteen billion, di ba? Tama ba yon? And then the split, the split is uh, fifteen billion. O kaya lumaki, uh, tama ba yon? Yes, madam chair. Uh, if you add this, just the the 18 and the 15, that's 30, 32 already. Uh, how come it's, ano, 
magulo yata to. Sabi mo 32 billion pero yung 18 pa lang at saka 15 ang iad mo, it's 32 already. Parang hindi tama ang balance. Eh. Do you add this to get 32? Uh, again, the total, yes, or ma'am. there are uh, there are uh, double counting. Uh, I I think the the, the total of thirty three billion. Uh, eh, kasi yas mo lang yung land tenure na eighteen, uh, almost nineteen, and then yung uh, split na fifteen and a half. You will get 32.5 na. Eh, paano yung iba na nakalagay dito? Double counting ba to? Uh, uh, may I call on uh, Yusek uh, Malsi, please, to clarify the matter. Yusek Malsi, please. Kasi yusek ang, Malsi. Major, um, ang major program mo kasi yung land tenure security program and then yung uh, split, di ba? Yun ang yes. major program nyo. Na ano? And uh, you said Fund One O One is the land tenure security program, and the Fund One O Two is the split, de ba? If you add the two, parang thirty two na to. Nasaan mong gagaling yung iba? Double counting ba to? De adin mo to, adin mo to. Ah, yung yung la yung land tenure uh, sino yung 18.8 yung combination ng land tenure at saka yung split di ba yes for the so, yung 18 plus tapos yung 15 ah uh, yeah yeah uh, yun billion uh, ano ba yung ano land tenure ah uh, land tenure 3 billion sabi mo you want to To make it faster, the distribution. It's that. It's that the land tenure security program. Yes. The distribution. Oh, oh. Yes, Madam Chair. Under our regular program. Under our regular program. Oh, ngayon. Kung bibilisan mo, magkano hindi hindi mo budget doon? That's around three point one billion, Madam Chair. Oh, ngayon three point one. Plus yung 15 billion for the split program that would total to 18 billion. Hindi ba? Hindi ba yung split eh funded by the World Bank yon? Ang GAA ba nagbibigay don? Hindi ba loan yung ano 80 percent ba? There is a counterpart. There is a counterpart on the part of the GAA. Yeah, but the counterpart is only five billion. Yes, Madam Chair. That's only around 22 percent. Ano ka lang gay dito? 15 15 billion. Hindi ko maintindihan kasi alam ko ang split, loan yung 19 billion tapos 5 billion ang counterpart ng government. ba diba? Loan yung sa World Bank. Eh ba't ano itong 15 billion? Bakit na-release na ba ng World Bank yung loan sa uh, ano, hinihingi nyo sa, sa DBM? Uh, uh, Hindi ko maintindihan yun. Kasi the okay. total project cost is 24 billion. Sabi nyo 5 billion ang counterpart natin tapos Uh, 19 billion manggagaling sa World Bank. Ba't ang hinihingi nyo sa Fund 102 is 15.5 billion? Uh, saan, bakit? Yung bang galing sa World Bank manggagaling sa DBM? Uh, hindi po. Hindi po, Madam Chair. Uh, eh, the, the, the billion to, sabi mo, for Bank. the whole program, it's uh, 24 billion. And then five billion will come from government, and nineteen billion will come from World Bank. Oh, ebat ka humingi ng fifteen billion from government for that program, di ba? Maximum is five billion over a period of four years. Yes, that's the counterpart of the deal, people. You five billion. So, basically, ma'am, for what? Ano yung humingi mo? Oh, fifteen billion. Ano to? Ah, ikatlari ko lang po namin, Madam Chair, no? You just have to clarify. You just have to clarify that kasi I cannot understand that. Sige po, sige po. Oo, sige. Okay. Patsy, can you clarify it, please? You said Malsi. Bernie, Bernie, ikaw na lang. You said Bernie Cruz, please. Sir? Yeah. Madam Chair, may I clarify po yung sa split project? 
Oh, so, yeah. Ma'am, kahit na po loan, kahit na loan proceeds po kasi, uh, nakalagay din po yun sa ano, parang budget cover. Mm-mm. Uh, okay. Kahit Even if it's oh, ka- kasama sa budget cover. But the total project is 24 billion. You're, you're telling me that for 21, 2021, you are asking for 15.5. That's almost, uh, uh, ang matitira na lang sa project is yung, di ba nag-start yan ng 2020? So meron ka pa nun 2020, tapos may 21, 2021 ka, tapos 2022, and then 2023. Kasi four years eh. Ang hinihingi mo yes. for 2021 is 15.5 billion. Eh, 24 billion lang ang total project. Madam Chair, uh, yes. uh, permission po to explain. Opo, kasi po ang ating uh, sa loan agreement, as per loan hmm. agreement, yung operational uh, ano niya uh, is only three years. Hmm. The another year is for documentation. So, ang target okay. so, po namin is... So, kung three years, uh, 24 billion divided by three is 8 billion a year. Ano po yun? Ano po ang... may matitira pa on the fourth year for documentation, may budget din doon. 24 billion lang ang total program eh. Yes, ma'am. Talaga, uh, oh. uh, Madam, ba't kahihingi Madam ng 15.5 sa isang year? Madam Chair, ang, ang projection po kasi as per uh, ano namin, yung agreement namin sa so with World Bank. Can you target... explain, para wag tayo magkagulo ha, can you explain Apa? the split program separately kasama yung budget at how do you, do, do you propose to spend the budget for four years, hindi ba? Sabi mo three years lang pero may gagawin pa rin on the fourth year, di may budget pa rin yun. I just want to see yung split program, what is the total budget, what did you spend in 2020, what will you spend in 2021, what will you spend in 2022, and what will you will spend in 2023. Para wala tayong gulo kasi nalalakihan ako dito sa almost 15.7 billion for 2021. Okay, kaya siguro hindi binigay sa inyo. <laughs> Masyado malaki yan. Oo. Okay, we'll explain uh, later. Okay, okay. okay. Oh. sige. Thank you. Go ahead. Okay, Madam Chair, the, uh, the split program was actually designed in order to address the collective clauses that were uh, that were uh, originally distributed for the past administrations, which are which is around 1.2 billion hectares of land. I understand that, and I know that they you want to split to give them individual budget so they can uh, uh, borrow. F- against it or sell it or whatever, <laughs> diba? So you're splitting to empower the farmers so that they have total, they have a title in each of their farms, diba? Naintindihan ko yun. Ang inaano ko lang, 24 billion yung total project, but uh, you're asking for 15.7 billion in 2021. And the project would last for four years. Parang, ang laki naman yun for one year, considering that the project will last for four years. So, yun lang ang question ko. So, I want you to explain to me how you will spend the 24 billion yearly on the split budget. So, I will understand. So, if it appears on your budget, I understand that this is uh, really what is expected, you are expected to do in one year. Yun lang. Okay. Thank you. I know the split. I have asked yes, about yes. it. Okay. Yes, yes, ma'am. And uh, also, uh, in addition to the empowerment of our farmers, ma'am, actually, it will generate income for the government yeah. because uh, the uh, the farmers would now be able to pay their amortizations to land bank mm-hmm. because as of now, these collective clauses are not being paid in terms of amortization to land bank. And at the same time, the local government units are unable to collect the real property tax that yeah, are supposed yeah. to be imposed. Okay. And I think that will give an additional income to the uh, uh, revenues of our uh, national government. Now, so you mean the, that if you spend 24 billion, uh, it will come back again to the government after a certain period of time in terms of taxes? Correct. 
and uh, in terms of taxes and uh, yes. of course to increase the income of farmers okay lang yon i understand yes, the project and i support it i just want to understand how the budget will be spent yearly yun lang yes. okay but i said the program is supposed to be uh, for four years and that will uh, last up to 2023 yes uh, for each year we have a certain target we have a certain target uh, to uh, cover uh, since uh, we have this, uh, we have actually uh, divided the 1.2 billion hectares into to, to four years. Uh, well, technically three years yeah. coverage because the fourth year is supposed to be intended for documentation. Yeah, and but the budget for 2021 is so big, 15 billion, 15.7 billion out of 24 billion. That's big for yeah. one year. Yeah. Probably there was a mistake here, Madam uh, Madam yeah. Chair. There was a mistake here because supposedly it has to be subdivided into at least four years. Yes. Four years, yes. depending yeah. on the extent of the coverage of the land. Uh, yeah. for That's why I want you state. to explain the budget so I will understand. Now, yes. it will be done in four years. How will you spend the twenty-four billion budget in four years? Okay. Okay. Because I find this twenty twenty-one very big. Okay, thank yes, you. Madam Chair. Uh, that is precisely the, I think there was really an error here because uh, 15 billion is not supposed to be released for this year. Yes, and yes. and uh, also, since DBM did not approve of this, is, this will not materialize. Yes, anyway, and, and that uh, Fund 101, uh, that is uh, ARBDSP, what is that? No, ma'am, this is the uh, regular land tenure security program. Because uh, we have to, as we have the discussed with you ah, the, last, okay. the last time that we have uh, discussed our project oh. or our program in regards to land acquisition and distribution, okay. the president wanted us so to your development and sustainability program budget is higher than your uh, land tenure security program. Diba? No, 3.1 lang yung land tenure, tapos yung uh, inyong sustainability program is 7.7. .7. Kala ko ba ang major project nyo is land tenure? So, ba't nagkabalik tadi yata ang budget? <laughs> Mas maliit yung, uh, uh, yung pagbibigay ng lupa kaysa dun sa development and sustainability program, 7.7. .7. Tapos yung pagbibigay ng lupa, 3.2 lang. Uh, Kala ko ang major program nyo is yung pag-distribute ng lupa sa mga tao. Dapat yun ang malaki budget, di ba? Okay. Do you uh, agree with me? Do you yeah, agree with me? Yeah, I think the figure here has to be explained properly, Madam. Uh, okay, yeah. sige, sige. Okay. okay. Uh, Yosef Malsi, okay, can, you please, can you please explain this one, this, uh, these figures? Since you were the ones who prepared all these figures, can you please explain this? So that uh, it will, you know, it will clarify all these things. You said, Malsi. Yes. yes, sir. Thank you. Uh, good morning again, Madam Chair. Mm -hmm. Yes, the the, the uh, interpretation is of the uh, honorable senator is correct, po. Uh, kaya lang, uh, ko kontin rin po kasi yung targets natin sa sa LTSP. Okay, okay. Uh, nagko-concentrate okay. na kayo ngayon. Uh, explain uh, to me. Kasi pag tinatanong ko kayo, sabi nyo 400, mahigit na 400,000 hectares. And if you will distribute every 10 years, that will last for 10 years, 40,000 a year. But mo sasabihin ka kaunti? Oh, ngayon sabi nyo, yung 400,000 meron may problema 250,000 kaya 170,000 na lang i-distribute nyo. Marami pa rin yun. Eh bakit? Kasi yun ang inyong ano for existence. Eh. I I would like to believe that your the reason for your existence is the LTSP o yung distribution ng land to the farmer, di ba? Yan ang reason for your existence. Kasi pag sinabi mong development and sustainability program, eh uh, katulad ng biggest na dinistribute nyo is uh, uh, rice, susunod de uh, coconut, susunod de sugar, uh, rather uh, corn. corn and then sugar. Lahat yan may program yan sa ano eh, sa Department of Agriculture. In fact, sabi ko nga sa inyo, 
eh yung mga naan dyan sa rice, sa coconut, sa sugar at sa corn, eh mag-participate na lang doon sa magagandang programa ng Department of Agriculture. We gave a lot of money to that. I passed laws on uh, rice. Ang rice, 10, 12 billion yung Rice Competitiveness Enhancement Fund and then 9 billion yung National Rice Program. That's a total of 21 billion. <laughs> Tapos dun sa sugar, I gave 2 billion a year and 300 million of that is for your black farm. Oh, the another one yon. Yung sa Coco Levy Fund, they are giving now 5 billion a year dun sa Coco Levy Fund. So, hindi nyo kailangan, yung the four highest na inyong mga crops, the rice, the coconut, the corn, and the the sugar, meron yung pondo. So you don't have to spend for it. In fact, ang matitira sa inyo would be rubber, uh, rubber, banana, at saka other crops na out of your two and a half million, AR, uh, 3 million ARBs, 400,000 lang yan. So doon nyo lang dadalhin. So I cannot understand why you have to spend so much. Kasi mag-coordinate lang kayo doon sa mga program namin para sa rice, sa corn, sa coconut and sugar. Lahat yan may pinasambatas para dyan eh. Oo. May pera yun eh. Separately. And those are uh, out of 300, 3 million yun na uh, ARBs. Ano yun? Uh, ang 2.5 million of 3 million is uh, uh, parang 85% or 80%. So you are just going to take care of the 20%. Kasi may legislation yung apat na yun. Eh. May legislation yun. Eh. So dapat alam nyo yung legislation na yun at doon kayo kumuha ng pera, hindi, hindi para galing sa inyo. So that you can spend more for land distribution para matapos na natin yung land distribution natin. Do you understand what I'm saying? Yes, Madam Chair. Na naintindihan po namin, Ma'am. Oh, kaya nga yan, kaya nga tinatanong ko, kaya tinanong ko nung pre-hearing natin, ilan nang sa coconut, ilan nang sa rice, ilan nang sugar, ilan nang uh, corn kasi may programang DA diyan at may legislation kami diyan eh. So gusto kong i ano sa inyo na doon niyo kunin yung pera para those people para matira sa inyo na wala is banana, rubber and other crops. Doon kayo mag-spend, di ba? Para hindi duplication tayo kasi ang laki ng binigay namin lalong lalo na sa rice. Ang laki-laki ng ibinigay na pera sa rice. And uh, your rice uh, ARBs should benefit from that. They are not uh, excluded from that. So, yun lang. Kaya ako tinatanong to. Kasi para yung pera nyo, sinasabi nyo konti lang binibigay sa inyo, madala nyo doon sa wala namang kaming programa para nang sa ganun, Uh, ma-maximize nyo. Oo. Uh, Di ba? Okay. Yes. Madam Chair, maliwanag ko po ito. Ito po yung proposed budget namin which was of course denied by the DBM. Oo. Kaya siguro na-deny yan kasi may Uh-oh. mga mali. <laughs> y- yung pong uh, 7.3. Kasi point... DBM, alam nila lahat yung budget na nilabas nila. Alam nila na pagkalaki-laki ang nilabas nila sa rice and they are forced to because that is a political crop. Oo. And uh, yung Coco Levy Fund, lalabas na. Nasa na third reading na namin sa Senado, hintayin na lang namin ang house para sa Bicam. Oh, so, ang laki din na binigay doon. Yeah. And then, uh, meron talagang sidalo for the sugar. And then, ang DA may national corn program. Oo. So, we should know that so that uh, even your arb uh, ARBs will benefit from that. Para yung natitira yung pera, ibigay nyo doon sa hindi na-cover ng legislation na yun. Okay. Sige. Tama po yun, Madam Chair. Ngayon po, ito pong ano, itong Fund 101 ng ARB DSP, kaya po na propose naging 7.7 billion ito sa proposed, original proposal because we wanted to expand yun pong uh, pagtulong po natin sa mga ARBs natin. Kasi nakita po namin na kailangan po nila yung uh, support service. Eh kasi ayaw niyong tulungan sila ma-access yung uh, binigay ng Rice Competitiveness Enhancement Fund at saka National Rice Program. Laki noon. Mahigit kaya, 20 billion yun. Kaya nga po. So, kaya ngayon so, alam na po na... Kaya yung in-charge mo dyan, dapat ma-access niya yung apat na yun para yung matitira kahit maliit. 
eh, ano na lang, 20% na lang ang tutulungan nyo. Kasi yung iba, ikukuha nyo na lang doon sa mga nilegislate naming mga fund para sa kanila. Yun ang ah, sinasabi ko. Oh, tama po yan, Madam yeah. Senator. Ngayon pong nalaman po namin na malaki po palang funding na ibinigay nyo. Malaki, malaki. Sa mga iba po ng mga fund. Legislated yun. Hindi yun at the whim of DBM. Legislated yun. So every year, ibibigay niya yun whether he likes it or not. Doon na lang po kami kukuha ng ibang mga suporta namin oh, para sa yeah, PGA. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Oh. Tapos ito pong 15 point billion, kaya po naging 15 billion po ito, dahil nung prepare po namin itong proposal sa DBM, hindi pa po approve yung loan sa World Bank. Oh. Hindi pa approve. Only reset nilang po na-approve ang World Bank, Madam Senator. Eh. Kaya nga po, kaya ito yung proposal namin dito sa original concept po ng split program. Pero miski na, na, miski hindi na approve ang program ang prog ng World Bank, eh 24 billion yun eh. Lamang okay. for 4 years, hihingin mo ang 15.7 billion in 1 year, parang mali pa rin yun, di ba? The, the pinaka ano is divided by 4 or divided by 3. Pag divided by 3, ang 24 billion, 8 billion lang yun. E eh, ba't ka hihingi ng 15 billion? Yun yung sinasabi ko sa iyo. Alam mo naman na ang DBM natin, hindi naman sila namimigay na maraming pera ngayon because may problema yung tax collection natin because of the COVID-19, nagre-recession tayo. So, konti pera nila ngayon available. Eh, ba't mo hihingi ng more than one half of the budget for one year? Eh, di talaga marireject yun, di ba? Kasi po ma'am yung concept po na ano, ng uh, split program, nag-umpisa pa last year pa po yan, wala pa po. Kaya program. nga, kaya nga. The, kaya, the most that you can ask, ask is 8 billion a year. Why are you asking 15 billion? Oh, the most you can ask is 8 billion because it's 24 billion divided by 3 is 8 billion. Opo, opo. Uh, we will try to connect the matter po, Madam Yes, Sarah. yes, yes, yes. Okay. We go on now. We go on now. Oh. Madam Chair, si Aimee po. Oh, sige, Aimee. Oh. Okay. Nabanggit na ni, uh, ni uh, Vice Chair Sincha yung land acquisition and distribution. Ang on record ninyo, Secretary John, yung 523,000 uh, hectares. Eh, pero ang sabi, nasa 157,000 hectares lamang ang uncontested, yung walang problema. So, sabihin natin 157, yung working number, kasi yung iba malabo na, hindi na mahanap yung benefits, yung sobrang haba na ng pangahon na nakalipas. Pero ang average annually ng DAR sa land acquisition, nasa 30,000 hectares. Ilang dam taong pa to bago matapos? Kasi ang bagal naman ninyo mag-distribution din eh. Okay. Madam Senator, kasi po, Madam Chair, ang nangyari po kasi ngayon, lalong-lalo na for 20, uh, 2020, talagang naapektuhan po yung aming land distribution dahil po dito sa COVID-19, hindi po pwede kaming makapunta sa mga lugar para mag-survey at uh, binagbabawalan po yung mga tao natin para pumasok po sa mga iba't ibang mga jurisdiction. Kaya... Yan po nagkaroon kami ng medyo na delay po ng hindi po masyadong malaki yung coverage ngayong taon na ito. Kaya so, yun po ang naging dahilan. Update, if you can update us, kung less pa ng 30,000 a year, ilang kaya ang uh, 2020? Mas lalong konti? Well, uh, siguro we are expecting an output of 90%, uh, Madam Chair. Uh, because... Uh, uh, well, no, it, is, it has been a normal practice because of the process, long process of land acquisition and distribution. And there are many other government agencies that are actually involved in the process, like, for example, the, the land bank and then the DNR, the DA, That's and, right. also, and also the... Uh, land bank, the land is compensable lands. Pero paano yung 64,000 hectares na non-compensable non-anak? non-LDP compensable. Anong mangyayari doon? Yun nga po. Yun, yun nga po sinasabi namin na yung sa mga uh, non-compensable lands, eh, mas mapapadali po ngayon yung mga coverage po na ibig sabihin, may exclude po sila kasi eh. Doon po sa talagang uh, total target po natin. 
At uh, ang mangyayari po kasi ngayon dito, ang sinasabi po namin, yung let me just continue yung, yung proseso po kasi, kailangan po kasi, marami po mga, yung mga government agencies is po na involved doon po sa land acquisition and distribution process. And because of that, nade-delay po kasi. Pero normally, during the third and fourth quarter of the year, pumipick up po yung aming land coverage at dumadami po. And normally, na, 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 nasasatisfy po namin 90% nung pong aming target at nag-spill over po yan doon sa next year. So most likely, for this 2020, malak, ma, ma, mga 90% po ang makukover namin doon po sa aming target. Pero nasa 30,000 lang yun. Ano ba yung problema sa non-land bank compensable? What are the issues there? Kasi iba naman yung sitwasyon nila. Bakit ang tagal pa rin? Akala ko mabilis lang yun eh. Dahil hindi naman nakasanda sa banko. Ah... Uh, Oh, okay, para po mas mas uh, maintindihan po natin ng uh, technical aspect po itong non-compensable lands, uh, Madam, Senat, Madam Chair, may I call on you, Sec. David Ero of our operations to explain it uh, more extensively. Uh, you, Sec. Ero, please. Uh, thank you po, Mr. Secretary. Uh, good, good morning po uh, to, the, to Mr. Chair and all the, all the members of the committee, uh, your honors. Uh, tama po yan. Regarding lang po sa compensable, even po na dapat mabilis po yung compensable, kaya lang may mga reasons pa rin po na nagpapatagal. For example po, kailangan pa rin po ng participation ng other agencies dyan. Let for, let's say for example, para sa investigation po ng cover na lupa, even ng compensable po, kailangan pa rin po participation ng land bank to conduct ang field investigation. Pero akala ko ng land bank to, ang karamihan dito, di ba, dapat covered na lang yan ng uh, DENR at uh, yung mga local club. Bakit uh, nahihirapan pa? Kasi hindi naman yung banko na yan. Uh, under the law po kasi talaga po yung participation ng three agencies po ay talagang required po. For example, for joint field investigation, kailangan po ang land bank. But, in, but, but when it comes to valuation po, hindi na po sila kala kailangan kasi ng compensable. But just the same po, pagdating naman po sa approval ng survey, kailangan pa rin po ang DNR dyan para po silang taga-approve ng survey na gagawin namin kahit na hindi compensable ang lupa. Then pagdating naman po sa registration ng CLOA, kailangan pa rin po ang LRA dyan to the register of dates para i-register yung mga CLOA. So kailangan That's pa rin right. po ang registration nila dyan. I'm very familiar with the process po kasi ang daming non-compensable dito sa Northern Luzon. Familiar po ako dyan kaya lang nagtataka ako Supposed to be convergence na ng lahat ng gobyerno. Matatagalan pa. Kailangan talagang uh, uh, ika nga, kariri natin yan. Kasi madali lang yan. Opo, ang ginawa po na yung mentor, ito si Secretary. For a while, may I ask the USEC to make a uh, a report, a briefer yes, yes. on this problem, and then maybe you can uh, indicate in the report your remaining 150,000 plus na lang na natitira, na walang problema. How do you propose to finish it in the next few years? Ano ba target nyo? Every year, kailan ba matatapos yun? <laughs> ba? Tapos kung may mga problema kayo doon, kaya kayo mabagal, eh sabihin nyo doon para maintindihan namin kasi hindi namin maintindihan. Okay ba yun na mag magawa ka ng report? Mas okay yun. Yeah? And then, uh, I want in this connection to acknowledge the presence of Senator Ralph Recto. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Mas so, okay yun, Isaac. Mag-submit ka na lang ng ko. Yes. Ah, Oo, oh, kasi ang sabi, uh, parang 150,000 plus lang ang walang problema. Yung 250, uh, parang may problema na malabo na yun. So yung 150, bigyan nyo lang kami ng schedule how you're gonna do it. And and hopefully, magawa nyo by 2022 kasi sabi ni Secretary Dar, sabi ni uh, President Duterte, gusto niya matapos to by 2022. Baka sakaling kaya nyo na yung 150 na yon by 2022. Okay. Opo, at saka yung, yung land bank naman, ang sabi nila, ang pending daw sa kanila sa principal only ay eh nasa 59.5 billion. Yun ang kwenta ng uh, agrarian reform sa land bank na yun. 59 billion po. Okay, sige. Uh, so, can we make that report uh, 
to be given to us before we go to plenary para pag may nagtanong doon alam natin sagutin di ba yeah sige thank you so you can continue senator Imi. thank you very much uh, you said um about namin yung uh, listahan mo at saka itatanong ko sa kapila naman ng mga lupa yung mga beneficiaries naman ano na yung status ng mahiwag ang listahan ng ARB kasi ang tagal-tagal na niyan na validate na ba ilang porsyento tapos na ba yan kasi ang dami nang namatay ito na yata ang pinakamatagal na land reform program sa buong mundo magsi 50 anos na by 2022 and uh, what's happened now to their heirs mga apo na yan uh, may listahan na ba talaga tayo ng recipient uh, madam chair uh, to address the query of uh, the good senator uh, we are initiating a program right now trying to validate uh, validate i mean the irbs if they are still the ones in possession of their lands and if they are still uh, actively tilling their respective soil uh, their respective awarded land so we have a project right now the only constraints that we have at the moment is that uh, uh, we need to make use of technology so that we will be able to really have an accurate and uh, a valid uh, 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 number of our ARBs that uh, we will be conducting. Kaya po, we have incorporated in our proposal uh, an, a budget so that we would be able to have the IT technology that uh, can really accommodate all the data that we will be gathering throughout the, the Philippines. Kasi po, Madam, uh, Madam, Madam Chair, as, of, uh, as we have manifested uh, earlier, the number, the number of uh, ARBs that were already distributed uh, lands uh, since the inception of the CARP is around 298, uh, 2.98 million, uh, 298 million. So napakara napakarami po niyan. And of course, this has been distributed nationwide. I think that is the reason why we really have to have an effective and an efficient way of gathering all the data so that we will be able to... to Are you saying na wala kayong listahan, mag-start kayo from scratch or at least no. meron kayo sabihin natin na 50% okay. Senator Aimee, Senator Aimee, okay. they gave a list of yes. the Earlier. agrarian okay. reform beneficiaries as of 2018 and uh, it's divided among coconut, rice, corn, sugarcane, rubber, banana, and other crops. And the number is around uh, 3 million. 3 million. Oh, oh, of, oh, oh. So I will send you a copy. I will send you a copy of what they gave me. So you will have an idea. And then siguro i-confirm lang nito. Sabi mo nga kasi 50 years na land reform baka nangamatay na yung iba nito. Para ma update. Oo. Oh. Oh, oh. So but I'll send you a copy of what they sent me. Oh, right oh, now. Okay. You is na 2.98 million na yan. Medyo tama na yan. 3 million. 3 million. Itinavalidate po namin, Madam Chair. We are validating it. Oh, 3 million. And then 2.5 million is from coconut, rice, corn, and sugar cane. I was telling them that if you help them, just refer them to the legislated. Ano? Two and a half million ang do sa apat, and the rest, 500,000 is rubber, banana, and other crops. Oh. Ah, okay. So I'll send you. They gave me a uh, listahan. Okay? Thank you very much. Opo. Uh, kasi sana ma-validate na yan kaagad. Kasi uh, apakahirap rin hanapin yung mga beneficial na yan. Last question na lang. Ano yung status ng IRR ng Bayanihan 2? Yung Section 4M, yung uh, sinabi kasi na yung DAR is designing the IRR, eh medyo mainit na usapin ng IRR ngayon dito sa Senado kasi kung minsan yung IRR hindi tumatalima sa batas o di kaya saksakan ng delay. So, eto nga, rinirate natin at meron na tayong president dyan sa Bayanihan 2 for the condemnation of the interest arrears ng ARB loans. Tapos yung principal, nakasaad rin sa Bayanihan 2, na i -re restructure with no interest as a permanent set of statutory benefits. 
So, nais kong malaman kung nakamove forward na po tayo sa IRR ng bayan ng ito. Unang-una po, Madam Chair, nagpapasalamat po kami sa Senate dahil po sa ginawa po ninyong batas. Uh, talaga pong tinutulungan po natin yung mga magsasaka natin, lalong-lalo na po yung uh, uh, condonation po ng uh, penalties at saka yung incorporation po dito sa uh, principal po ng kanilang binabayaran. So, uh, unang-una, ginagawa na po namin, Madam uh, Chair, yung pong uh, atin pong uh, uh, IRR. We are in the process of really coming up with an effective RRR and uh, we will give you a copy, uh, an advanced copy of the proposed IRR po para po talaga pong uh, matugunan po namin yung provision na ginawa po yung uh, napakaganda para po sa ating pong mga magsasaka. Thank you very much, Secretary. Sana magawa na natin. Pero meron pang trabaho doon dahil meron work pa. Maliban pa sa interest arrears, karagpong nun yung restructuring ng principal. So, yun pa yung susunod na homework natin, kaakbay ng uh, land bank. Thank you. Nakikipagtulungan po kami sa land bank, uh, Madam, uh, Chair, uh, Madam Chair. Uh, at uh, talaga pong uh, uh, ginagawa po namin na maging maganda po yung IRR po niya para talaga pong maramdaman ng mga magsasaka natin yung uh, kagandahan ng batas na ito, Madam uh, Chair. Thank you very much, uh, Secretary John. At uh, Vice Chair, wala na po akong katanungan. Mangungulit na lang ako sa mga pangyayon na isasubmit sa Vice Chair ko. Sige hey, po. Uh, uh, I want to ask the Senators who would want to ask question. How about Senator Angara? Naandiyan pa ba? Manifest lang. Okay. Uh, si Senator Bongo, go ahead. Uh, good day. Madam Chair and fellow uh, colleagues, I'm here to manifest my full support for the budget of the uh, Department of uh, Agrarian Reform. Uh, Secretary Jan, kasi just uh, uh, full support po kami ni Pangulong Duterte sa Department of uh, Agrarian Reform. Eh, pagpatuloy niya lang po ang pagbibigay ng uh, uh, karapatan sa ating mga magsasaka upang malaya nilang pagyamanin ang kanilang lupang Sinasaka, unahin po natin ang mga mahirap at ang mga nasa vulnerable sectors para guminhawa at ang nasa, para guminhawa po ang kanilang pamumuhay. Witness po ako sa kasipagan ng inyong departamento. Last August po ay may dinaluhan pa po ang aking opisina na event wherein the Department of Agrarian Reform distributed nearly uh, 4,500 hectares of land to some uh, 3,035 beneficiaries. In addition to this, inatasan uh, ko din po ang aking opisina na magbigay ng assistance sa mga beneficiaries. No? At nakita ko rin talagang walang pinipili ang inyong uh, departamento. Lalo, lalo napatunayan niyo po ito doon mismo sa Boracay na kung saan po ay nabigyan po ng uh, kanilang sariling uh, titulo o pag-aari uh, pag na lupa yung talagang may-ari doon sa Boracay. Uh, saludo po ako sa inyo sa ginawa niyo doon sa, sa Boracay at wala, wala kayong uh, pinipili. At yun po ang pinaga, pinapaalala ng ating uh, Pangulo. Ibigay niyo po sa mga mahirap yung lupa na dapat talaga sa kanila matagal na po. Sabi ko bakit paantayin pa natin na ngayong panahon to na ibibigay po yung lupa na pwede naman po nung una sa mga nakaraang uh, administrasyon, pwede naman nilang uh, gawin yan. At uh, so, congratulations po sa... sa uh, Welcome development po rin po yung proyekto na Department of Agrarian Reform known as support to uh, itong parcelization of uh, lands for individual titling which will commence this month and end in 2023 under this uh, project a total of 1380 uh, 1, 1, and 420 hectares nationwide will be parcelized uh, and issued individual titles which will cover 1,140,000 and 735 agrarian reform beneficiaries i also laud the department for its agrarian uh, reform beneficiaries development and sustainability program 
which helps our, our agrarian reform beneficiaries through conducting training, providing farm equipment and machineries, and, and giving them access to credit and microfinancing. It is for these reasons that uh, I fully support the budget of the Department of Agrarian Reform. Malaking tulong po ang ginagawa ninyo para sa ating mga magsasaka, mapaunlad nito ang uh, ating mga rural areas at ang ating uh, food security. Mahirap man o mayaman, dapat lahat po ng Pilipino ay magkaroon ng sarili lupa. Kung ano po ang para sa kanila ay dapat para sa kanila. At salamat rin po sa inyong suporta sa Balik uh, Probinsya Bagong Pag-asa program ng ating uh, Duterte administration at alam ko po na malaki ang tiwala ko sa inyong uh, departamento na unahin niyo po ang ating mga mahihirap natin na kababayan. Maraming uh, salamat po sa Tukalitan at sa lahat po ng empleyado ng uh, Department of Agrarian uh, Reform. Full support po ako sa inyo. Maraming salamat, Madam Chair. Uh, maraming salamat sa iyo, uh, Senator Bongo. Meron pa ba hong ibang mga uh, senador na magtatanong? Wala na yata. Uh, now you can proceed with your... The, this is a proposed budget, but you have a 2021 budget that was approved. So maybe you can continue on with that. And first of all, Madam Chair, uh, I would like to appreciate and thank uh, Senator Bongo for his uh, support to the Department of Agrarian Reform. Uh, we can, the administration can be rest assured that we will uh, continue to implement the program uh, with uh, competence and with uh, uh, full devotion as in accordance with the mandate given to us by President Rodrigo Roa Duterte. Thank you very much, Senator Bong Bongo, for uh, your uh, full support. Parami salamat to. Uh, so may I continue, Madam Chair, with our uh, proposal, please? Uh, the budget... Uh, Slide, let's go to slide 41, please. Slide 41. Um, Asudadar's 2021 budget in the NEP of 8.851 billion, it includes the allocation for general administration and support amounting to 1.878 billion or 21% and 721 million for support to operations at 8%, which has funding for policy formulation, planning, monitoring and agrarian reform, reformation, information, and education. The bulk of the 2021 budget at 5.8337 billion or 66% is allotted for our three main programs under operations, which are number one, land tenure security program, which ensures the tiller security of tenure with a budget of 3.429 billion. This amount is supported by two fund sources, Fund 01 with 2.929 billion to cover the implementation of the regular PAPs under the LTSP that include land acquisition and distribution, and Fund 102 with 500 million to cover the GB, GOP counterpart requirement of the split project. The Agrarian Justice Delivery Program, which promotes the tillers' rights and welfare with a budget of 897 million, and finally, the Agrarian Reform. Beneficiaries Development and Sustainability Program, which ensures the agrarian reform areas will be improved with a total of 1.511 billion budget. This program is also supported with two fund sources. Fund 101 with 1.397 billion to implement the regular PAPs under the ARBDSP that includes provision of capacity development interventions, agricultural extension services and farm inputs, and farm machineries, among others. Under Fund 102, 114 million is allocated for the Foreign Assisted Project, Converge or Convergence on Value Chain Enhancement for Rural Growth and Empowerment. This minimal amount will cover the completion of the remaining activities of the project Converge, Converge which project duration is scheduled to end in December 2021. On a per allotment class breakdown, our personal services allocation for fiscal year 2021 is 5.108 billion or 58% of the 8.81, $851 billion dark recommended budget, 3.7 billion for maintenance of, and other operating expenses, equivalent to 42%, and 38.87 million or roughly 1% for capital outlays. Next slide, please budget by organizational outcome. Your honors, 
Allow me now to present our post-fiscal year 2021 budget by organizational outcome. Focus on the MOOE, which fund our direct operation costs to deliver our services. The DAR has structured its main operations into three main organizational outcomes, and the budget for each uh, O is as follows. Pillar security or tenured insured. Our O01 includes the process in covering targeted land holdings that have been issued with notice of coverage under CARP. Under O01 is the land tenure security program. Its total MOE allocation is 1.23 billion, which 52% of 533 million will come from Fund 101 for the regular LTSB activities and 490 million from Fund 102 for the split project. Under LTSP, Fund 101, land acquisition distribution is allocated with 356 billion or 67%. Land land transfer activities has 12 million or 2% share. Land owners' compensation has almost 7 million budget or 2%. Post land distribution projects and activities has 77 million or 14%, while supervision and management and processes relative to LTSP will get 15% or 81 million budget. Under the LTSP Fund 102, the 490 million is for the split project for the parcelization of collectively issued CLOAs and issuance of individual titles. Next slide, please. I now, may I now refer you to the organizational outcome and the tiller's rights and welfare promoted. Under 002, is the Agrarian Justice Delivery Program. Our proposed MOE allocation will be utilized for the accelerated processing of cases and swift and efficient resolution of agrarian disputes, consistent with the directive of the Duterte administration to shorten the processing time and delivery of services by all the government agencies to our respective clientele. For fiscal year 2021, the department allocates a total of 421 million for our agrarian justice delivery program. Bulk of its budget will go to provisions of agrarian legal assistance at 159 million or 38%, followed by adjudication agrarian reform cases with 131 million or 31%. Resolution of agrarian law implementation cases with 78 million or 19%, and the least allocation is given for supervision and management for effective delivery of legal services and adjudication of agrarian reform cases with 53 million or 12 percent. Next slide, please. Agrarian reform areas improved. The proposed MOE budget allocation for O3 or Agrarian Reform Beneficiaries Development and Sustainability Program reached 842 million under Fund 101. It includes the allocation for supervision and management of 94 million or 30% of the budget for effective delivery of support services. Social infrastructure building with 118 million or 16% enterprise development and economic support with 229 million or 31%. And climate resilient farm productivity support with 301 million at 40% or a total of 742 million for local programs. Also included in the O03 budget is the allocation for the completion of the foreign assisted project convergence on value chain enhancement for rural growth and empowerment project or converge with a budget of 100 million under MOOE. Next slide, please. Capital outlays, uh, budget under organizational outcome, agrarian reform areas improved. The only capital outlays allotment of the DAR for 2021 is 7.5 million for foreign assisted projects converged on value chain enhancement for rural growth and empowerment. This minimal amount will be utilized for the completion of the remaining projects of converge, which is a closing date of December 20, 2021. Next slide, please. The DAR shares the responsibilities for the implementation of the government's agrarian reform program with other government agencies. The DAR is the lead agency in implementing the Comprehensive Agrarian Reform Program and works together with the Land Bank of the Philippines, the Department of Environment and Natural Resources, the Land Registration Authority, the National Irrigation and Administration, 
and the Department of Trade and Industry. For fiscal year 2021, a total of 9.973 billion is allocated among the CARP implementing agencies for the implementation of the Comprehensive Agrarian Reform Program. Bulk of this budget, or 89%, is for the DAR at 8.851 billion, which is inclusive of the Land Bank of the Philippines allocation for landowners' compensation of 6.7 billion. On the other hand, a total of 1.122 billion or 11% is being allocated among other CARP implementing agencies for their agrarian reform related programs and projects. This allocation per CIA is included in the budget of their mother agency. The per agency allocation can be seen on the slide before you, before you your honors. The DNR has an allocation of 227 million that supports both the land tenure, security, conduct and approval of land survey and ARB development programs, support services in community-based forest management areas of CARP. The LRA is in charge of the registration of generated EP CLOAS with a budget of 179 million pesos. The NIA and the DTI are both supporting in the delivery of extension services to our farmer beneficiaries. The NIA has the mandate to develop, construct, as well as maintain existing communal irrigation facilities in the agrarian reform areas. The DTI coordinates closely with the DAR on the identification of priority programs and areas that would support the ARBs, the ARBOS, in terms of product development and marketing, among others in venturing into entrepreneurial projects. Next slide, please. In closing, Please allow this humble representation to share with you honors the desire of the Department of Agrarian Reform to continuously improve the state of Philippine agriculture and the livelihood of our poor farmers through the provision of our services. For this, we will need our proposed budget of 8.851 billion for fiscal year 2021 that we have just presented. Equally important is our request for this honorable body to support the funding of new projects that we would like to pursue in 2021. Among these are the Kamusta Saka project, the Mega Farms project, and please allow me to call on the concern uh, later on with the permission of the um, Honorable Chair if they would be willing to hear these new projects that have been uh, in line as one of the programs of the department. So again, thank you very much to the honorable members of the Committee on Finance for this opportunity, and may God bless and take care of us all, especially during this time. Maraming salamat po, Madam Chair, and to all the members of the Committee on Finance. Uh, if you have questions now, uh, uh, Secretary Castillo. Yes, Madam uh, Chair. Uh, so, uh, can I ask if other senators will ask questions uh, or I have to ask my question? Uh, no more senators asking? No more. So, I can begin my question. In your uh, most recent... Madam Chair, just a few questions. Okay. Uh, we we recognize Chair. Senator Ralph. Yeah, very briefly. Okay. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, Secretary, good, uh, good morning. Good morning, Paul, uh, Senator. Yeah, thank you for your, yes, thank you for your presentation. Uh, just a few questions, uh, Secretary. So, the, your total budget for next year is roughly what? Eight, nine billion? There about? Yes, yes, Paul. Eight, more than eight billion, Paul. Eight point eight billion. Okay. And uh, simple questions, uh, Secretary. How many hectares of land will you be able to distribute or redistribute next year? Uh, we are looking at uh, around. Uh, uh, 40,000 hectares, uh, uh, Senator. Okay. And in the past, your average is what? Roughly about 150,000 hectares? No, no, hindi na po. Not, not anymore, Mr. Senator, because uh, uh, the lands that have been served with the notice of coverage is not that vast anymore. And some Understood. of those which, which have been uh, uh, covered uh, with, uh, with the, served with the notice of coverage uh, most of them are already problematic, and that is the reason why uh, there is a difficulty. Okay, and uh, after the forty thousand next year, how much? How many will be the remaining? Uh, probably around uh, 
Well, 100,000 more, 100,000 plus more. So maybe in two to three years, we can be done with regard to land distribution. Barring no more, barring no complications, um, with, uh, Madam Chair, uh, we will be able to deliver and comply with the completion of our uh, delivery of uh, okay. the uh, land acquisition and distribution. Thank you, Secretary, for that. Uh, with regard to the receivables of land bank from agrarian and reform beneficiaries, uh, how much are the total loans left? Okay. For a more exact figure, uh, Madam Chair, may I call on you, Sek Pangulayan, who is our uh, representative with Land Bank, in order to give us the, the data, uh, Madam uh, Chair, uh, Senator Ralph, for yes. that, please. Yes. Uh, Senator, uh, uh, I'm, sure you're, I'm sure you're aware, Secretary, that I do have a bill, and it's a, an advocacy of mine, and together with Senator Aimi, na tanggalin na yung in yung utang ng mga agrarian reform beneficiary sa land bank no okay alam, alam or to pay during the pandemic yes and uh, i think we incorporated that in bayani and two at least for one year if i'm not mistaken no so how much is the, the total uh, outstanding loans or rather receivables of land bank from the agrarian reform beneficiaries uh una una po madam chair we would like to appreciate to, to extend our warmest uh uh, gratitude. Uh, uh, thanking uh, Senator Recto is one of the proponents of this uh, provision under the Bayanihan law uh, that exempting the penalties and interest imposed on those who have not paid their amortizations with land bank and at the same time incorporating uh, the uh, previous uh, the, the payments made to the principal and this definitely would help our farmers. Uh, overcome the challenges posed by the pandemic. Maraming salamat po, Senator Recto, sa inyo pong mga panukala. Sagurado pong makakatulong po ito sa ating mga magsasaka. So, to answer your query and your uh, question on the matter, uh, Senator Recto, but I'm sure with your permission, may I call on you, Senator Louis Pangulayan, to give us the figures for the data that is being required by Senator Recto. Madam Chair. Senator Recto, if I may, um, the um, arrears of the interest uh, that were waived by Bayanihan 2 are upwards of 6.3 billion and the uh, outstanding total principal with land bank according to the records is upwards of 59.5 billion or less correct i don't i don't doubt the figures given by senator marcos but uh, just for the record yes yes i'd like to hear baka may mas yes. updated baka yes. na <laughs> sana music to you're on mute uh good afternoon uh, good afternoon madam chair permission to speak uh, good afternoon, uh, Mr. Senator. In response to your query, uh, based on the uh, data of the Land Bank of the Philippines, and it is the collector of all the monthly amortization, uh, annual amortization and payment of interest, uh, the total amount uh, partially paid as of today, and let me first uh, address that, is uh, 1.22 billion pesos with an interest payment of 1.05 billion pesos, covering 274,000 ARBs and 444,000 hectares of land covered. This is what has already been partially paid. Now, uh, Mr. Senator, Madam Chair, uh, the principal, as of this date, um, the balance is... Uh, 14.54 billion pesos for individual CLOAS awarded to farmers. Uh, this covers 274, as I mentioned earlier, 1,000 ARBs and 434,000 hectares. In addition to this amount, there is another collectible of 44.21 billion pesos. This is coming from the collective CLOAS, Mr. Senator and Madam Chair. The 44 billion pesos covers 781,000 hectares. Uh, these are collective CLOAS, which will be included in the Agrarian Reform Receivable Fund, 
once the split project has completed parcelization. This jibes with the state, sir. Naka, Mr. Senator, nakamute po kayo. Sorry for that. Sorry for that, Mr. Louis. But uh, let me cut you for a moment. So, in effect, what you're saying is that roughly about 60 billion pa rin ang receivable ng land bank with our agrarian reform beneficiaries. Opo. And uh, ang nabayaran lang is roughly 2 billion. 1 billion in principal and 1 billion in interest. Um, based on these records po, um, ganito po, yung pong binabanggit kong 1.2 and 1.05 billion kanina, yun po yung mga partially paid. Ang fully paid po po is 7.89. Uh, okay, Chair, Mr. Senator. Okay, and therefore, what is the repayment uh, rate? Napakababa, di ba? Uh, Doon po sa dalawang libro po kasi ito, yung unang libro po, yung mga individual CLOAS, maganda naman po ang payment record ng mga holders of individual titles. Okay, on the individual CLOAS, what is the repayment rate? According to Land Bank po, uh, mataas po ito, umaabot po ng uh, 50... 57%, Mr. Chair. Yun po ang report okay. sa ng, ng land bank. Okay, thank you for that. Huh? So, pag may titulo, individual CLOA, 57% ang repayment rate. Opo. Roughly. Okay? Yes, Mr. And uh, what percentage ang individual CLOA compared to the uh, hindi individual CLOA? At present, Mr. Chair, um, Madam Chair and Mr. Senator, mas malaki po ang porsyento ng uh, collective CLOA. There was a time, and that was before the current administration, yeah. na ang number of collective CLOA ay 61, uh, ay almost, uh, sorry, ang collective CLOA po is more than uh, 59, is 59%. Ang collective okay. CLOA, so, 41% yes. ang individual. This It's was before the so term today, to 30. Yes, yes. So today, Uh, correct me if I'm wrong, huh? my appreciation, no? Okay. Roughly, 60% are collective CLOA and 40% is individual CLOA. That will, is that correct? Allow, yes, give us an accurate picture of the situation. Yes, Mr. Senator. Of, Mr. Of Chair, roughly Senator. how many hectares of land? And total, uh, individual, and uh, collective? Okay. All right. Mr. Senator. Na na, yeah. Ang mga napamigay na po kasi is about uh, 4.8 million hectares. Doon po sa... 4.8 million. Ba batay po sa datos ng Land Bank of the Philippines. I would like to make a correction, sir. Ang collection rate pala doon sa individual CLOA, 61%. 61%. Okay. Matas po. Ang uh, total amount for amortization by ARBs is about uh, 1.6 million hectares. Uh, 70% of this uh, amount remains unbooked at the start of the term of the president because these are collective CLOAS. We expect, Mr. Senator, Madam Chair, that this will be transferred to the accounts receivable once matapos po ang split. Ngayon po, uh, Madam Chair and Mr. Senator, yung yes. po nga, bayan yan, law 2. Yes. Wait, you said, Louis, when you say split, yung collective gagawin na ninyo individual CLOA yan. Yes. Yes, yes Madam Chair, Mr. Senator. Opo. Okay. So, Uh, of the 4. Uh, almost 5 billion hectares na pamigay na, ilan yung beneficiary ulit lahat-lahat? Doon sa mga napamigay na po, um, humigit ko mo lang po na wala lang po dito sa datos ko ngayon. Pero ang mga number of farmers po doon, doon sa mga nagbayad na... Hindi, hindi, hindi nagbayad. Yung, ano lang, yung... Uh, Yung how many total beneficiaries? Alright po. Ang, ang mga bisip, ganito to po, Mr. Senator, Madam Chair, ang mga beneficiaryo po, dun sa mga collective CLOAS, ay humigit kumulang na, uh, hindi, wala lang po di sa data, pero yung pong individual CLOAS, ang... Uh, may I interject nga? Can you please make a written report of what uh, Senator Recto is asking para ma-follow namin? Medyo magulo eh. Oh. Yes, Madam Chair. Okay, May initial report you. po kami sinamit uh, last two days ago. Yes, ma'am, we will uh, yeah. complete supplement. Louis, isn't it that the average is about 1.5 hectares per beneficiary? The law provides for a maximum of 3 hectares and Correct. it is in that uh, 
figure 1.5 as an average. More than average. average. Having said that, roughly you have about three million beneficiaries. Am I correct? Well, yes, Mr. Chair, about 2.8, 3 million beneficiaries. Beneficiaries, no? And 40% of them would have an individual title or CLOA. Yes, Mr. Would, would yes, it be safe to say that, now. right? Okay. okay. And then 60%, no? Okay. And then, uh, ano naman yung repayment rate nung uh, yung, yung combined CLOA? Or what do you call it? Yung non-individual CLOA? Collective. Collective CLOA. Collective. Oh, collective. Ano yung repayment rate yan? Wala pa pong bayad ang mga holders ng collective CLOA. Okay, Hindi pa pong yes, magbabayad. Okay. Now, in, la in this year's budget, I was responsible to assist you in putting a lot of money for titling. Opo. Opo, opo, opo. And then this year, may 15 billion ba kayo for titling? Is that correct? No, no. I I want to interject. Yes. Uh, the total uh, the total budget for split is 24 billion. 5 yes. billion will be given by the government of the Philippines and uh, 9 bi 19 billion will be financed by World Bank. Correct. Correct. So out yung binigay sa kanila this year for uh, split split ng government is 500 million, ba? Out no. of the 5 billion. Yun siguro ang kulang. Kung you divide it by 3, um, 5 billion should be at least 1.5 billion this year, ba? Uh, Yusek, uh, with the permission yes. of the chair, uh, my understand. How much is your budget 2020 for the split for the titling? 2020. Not 2021, huh? 2020. Uh, uh, Mr. Mr. Senator, Madam Chair, I, I refer that to the Finance Office, po, sa, tsaka, uh, sa head po ng yes. split. Yes. Yusek Bernie Cruz, please, if you if you are orville, please. Uh, yes, uh, good good uh, afternoon, Madam Chair, uh, Senator Ralph. Again, uh, I would like to uh, give uh, some uh, clarification regarding the budget for split. Before before po yung split, uh, roughly umaabot lang po ng 100 million yung, yung binibigay sa parcelization ng collective CLOA almost uh, yearly. And then, uh, yung katanungan po ni Madam Chair kanina, bakit 15 billion yung sa split for year one? Uh, Madam Chair, gusto ko lang pong i-explain na yung Yusek, year one po kasi... Yusek, na, Yusek, ang tanong, magkano ang budget sa 2020? For tie split. Yung split, 15 billion, tama? No, um, yung request po, nila for 2021, yung 2020, tapos na yun, magkano binigay sa inyo? Madam Chair, binigyan po kami ng, uh, ng uh, Congress. Actually, wala pong binigay ang BBM for split last uh, this year. Binigyan kami ng Congress ng 500 million. Uh, hanggang ngayon po siya ay unreleased. Kasi ang sinasabi ng uh, BBM, hihintayin na lang niya yung uh, loan validity at gagawin na lang siyang... Uh, oh, Na-approve na ngayon, di ba? Na-approve na ngayon, uh, di ba? Ang loan na World Bank na so i-release na kayo ngayon 2020 ng 500 million. Pag nag-loan uh, validity na po siya within this month, uh, hopefully, oh, Madam Chair. Oh, okay. Ayan. So, so far, next, year, so far, next yeah. year, ang binigay sa inyo, 500 million, di ba? Nakita ko doon sa presentation nyo eh. For split. Magkano binigay next year, 2021? Yung oh. ano ng government, ah, yung counterpart ng government. Magkano binigay sa inyo? Uh, ang binigay po uh, sa NEP, ang pagkakaalam ko is 2 billion. Ano pagkakaalam? May binigay na eh. 2 billion. Ano 2 billion po. Ang binigay ano po sa GOP counter... Madam Chair, ang binigay po last year, for okay. this year, for this year, no? Uh, 500 million. Uh, tapos ang ibibigay for 2021 is 2 billion. Okay. okay. So thank you for that. Okay. okay. So, question... Uh, you will be needing divided by three, so eight billion a year to finish that, di ba? 
Yeah, but uh, the 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 other counterpart will be a loan from land bank. Correct. So, correct. hindi kailangan ibigay ng government. So, 5 billion lang nga kailangan ibigay ng government. Okay, 15 it, billion ang loan ng land bank. Ay ng World Bank. Oo. Okay. Okay, got it. So, yung 24 billion total yan to be able to title all the properties. Is that correct? Uh, total po siya for to title all the properties. Uh, malaki po yung hinihingi namin for the first year, Madam Chair. Uh, kasi po, lahat ng equipments and uh, machineries, uh, kung makikita natin doon sa program po ng split, uh, doon sa first year talaga yung bulk ng expenses. Kasi lahat ng mga kakailanganin, dapat ipipurchase siya doon the first year. Tapos uh, kung makikita natin yung program ng split, on the first year, 60,000 uh, hectares ang kailangan namin i-produce. On the second year, it's 700,000. And on the last year, it's 400,000. So, dun sa, sa pag-prepare ng 700,000, kailangan pa rin po namin on the first year na may ayos po ito lahat simultaneously. Yeah, got it. Got it. Uh, you so, said that. Okay. So, you will agree with me that to finish the program ng agrarian reform, di halos lahat na pamigyan na natin is lupa eh. Di ba? Ang problema, walang titolo. Okay? So, ngayon, tapusin na natin yung titolo. Di ba? Okay? And then, moving forward, so you have maybe three years to distribute, hopefully three years to title everything. Okay? Yes. And in the meantime, Convergence with the DA and DENR, DA for Support Services, as mentioned by our chairman. Uh, uh, Madam Chair, Madam Chair, uh, Senator, uh, yes. Senator. Ang, ang convergence po sa split project, ay ang apat na uh, title no, 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 giving... I'm not talking about the, the split project anymore. We're done with that. Uh, I'm talking uh, about convergence with the DA to assist agrarian reform Apo? beneficiaries na mga imponto na nga ang pinigay sa DA para tulungan yung ating mga magsasaka, di ba? Nabanggit na yan ng chairman kanina. Ang sinasabi ko sa inyo, ang trabaho ninyo in the next three years is to finish your land distribution, title everything. In the meantime, work with the DA to increase your productivity of a grant for beneficiaries, di ba? Yun ang programa in the next three years, hopefully, di ba? And we will support you in that. Final question. At the end of these activities, three years or four years, how long that will take, di ba? What happens to a grant reform? Nawawala po. Ako po marinig. Should you be... Secretary, let me ask the Secretary. Uh, assuming in the next administration, matapos ninyo yung trabaho ninyo, land distribution, na title natin yung property. Of course, in the meantime, you work with the DA to improve your productivity, huh? incomes of our farmers. Huh? But then, eventually, we will have to decide, should there be a part of the Department of Agriculture for extension services? <coughs> no, or halimbawa, uh, because of the Mandana's ruling, Yung ira lalaki sa local government, nawawala na ang malaking pondo sa national, ibibigay sa lokal. At yung tipod yung agriculture, should we now, the extension services of DART, dapat ba may devolve yan to the local? Or do you want to be at the national level under the Department of Agriculture? Secretary. Okay. Uh, to answer your question, uh, uh, Senator Recto, uh, actually, uh, at, the, at this point in time, we are also in some sort of uh, of uh, uh, evaluation with regards to what will happen to the department after we have already concluded in the distribution of all the uh, lands that have been covered or have been served with the notice of coverage. Uh, under the Constitution, there is a provision there which uh, states that... Uh, even after the uh, distribution of the uh, lands intended for our agrarian reform beneficiaries have been accomplished, the function of the department would still continue in reference to the agrarian justice delivery 
and also the support services that are to be entitled to our agrarian reform beneficiaries. So that is the provision of law that uh, we are actually were in a quandary as to whether we can actually uh, close or uh, terminate the uh, department's role, considering that the Constitution of the Republic expressively states that uh, the uh, function of the department must have to continue, particularly with respect to the agrarian justice delivery and also the support services. Yeah. So could that be done under the Department of Agriculture as well? Well, uh, if that is the uh, concept that would have to be uh, adopted by probably the next administration in reference to uh, uh, making that the role of the Department of Agrarian Reform placed under the Department of Agriculture, then uh, that would probably be enforced or implemented. But uh, we are just in a quandary whether or not we can supersede or we can set aside the provision of the Constitution stating the Department of Agrarian Reform will have to continue, particularly with respect to its mandate of agrarian justice delivery and also for support yeah. services. Sec Secretary, ilan yung tao ninyo sa agrarian reform? How many people do you have right now? Uh, I think around 7,000, 7,000 more or less uh, uh, good senator. Okay. And then the DA has more or less how many? I'm not aware of that, but what uh, I know is that uh, some of the functions of the Department of Agriculture, particularly in the regional uh, provincial level, has been devolved to the LGUs. Okay. Not unlike like with the Department yeah. of Agrarian Reform, wherein we have employees uh, from in the regional level, provincial level, uh, to include the municipal level, and even in the barangay level because of the... Uh, yeah. Uh, Barangay Agrarian Reform Council that we have. Yeah, yeah Secretary, finally, uh, um, with regard to the uh, outstanding receivables of the land bank, you support our position with Senator Marcos, no? That uh, let us forego already uh, yung agrarian reform beneficiaries na it doesn't make sense na pagbabayarin pa natin sila considering napakali itna na ng income level ng mga farmers natin no at hindi naman binabayaran na rin naman talaga yung uh, receivables sa land bank is that correct we we agree with you completely uh, um, okay. senator yes. you have that you put this up to the, in the cabinet for discussion well uh, i think that would be one of the matters that will have to be discussed the moment that the president convinces the cabinet but as of this time uh, for the during the uh, tendency of the uh, the uh, COVID-19 uh, since it uh, it has uh, bothered the operations so, of uh, it, the, yeah. the government, we yeah. have not as yet convened yeah. in the cabinet. Okay, okay. Now in the in the land bank, uh, so in their accounting or in their books, do they claim that they have receivables from agrarian reform beneficiaries to the tune of sixty billion? <laughs> Sa libro ba nila meron sila receivables? I think that was the figure that was given by Senator right. Ives and also by Yusek Pangulayan, yes. uh, the Senator. So the, point is, the point is this. It would appear to be bad receivables na rin eh. <laughs> diba? <laughs> Ilang 50 years na eh. <laughs> oh, diba? So, masama pa yung accounting nila claiming that they will receive this at the, at the future time, diba? So, dapat yan, may loan loss provision na rin yan eh. That's the reason why they provision yeah. the, the law that you oh, have to no? Anyway, we will yeah, pursue this. Uh, we will pursue this, no? and eventually we do have a bill. Uh, so we look forward to your support. And I ask this question thinking of what to do in the future for the agrarian reform department as well. No? Whether or not you should continue, whether or not you should be with the DA, or whether or not that should be devolved. Huh? Considering what's going to happen a few years from now when we implement the decision of the Supreme Court as far as uh, uh, sharing of local governments are concerned. So let me thank our chairman for giving me this opportunity uh, to be enlightened and to ask a few questions. So marami salamat, Madam Chair. It's yeah. always a pleasure yeah. to be with you in the committee. Uh, marami tayo natututunan. Uh, salamat, uh, Chairman Villar.
Uh, I want to make a manifestation uh, with regards to agrarian reform justice. Hindi ba pwedeng dalhin yan sa DOJ afterwards? Hindi ba create a uh, uh, there for agrarian reform justice? Uh, <laughs> iyon lang. Uh, may I recognize Senator Amy Marcos? Yes, hear it lang ako, Senator Recto. Kasi um, may draft so, purportedly, DA dial inspired uh, for a new department for uh, Department of Agricultural Development. Kasi nga yung Department of Agriculture, kung sasakupin sila ng Department of uh, Agriculture and Rural Development, pagkarami-rami ng sanga-sanga at ahensya sa ilalim ng agriculture. Baka very inefficient. So, ang rekomendasyon niya nila, official or unofficial, is for a new department called Rural Dev. Thank you. Yeah. Madam Chair, with your permission, please. Madam Chair. Yes, yes, uh, uh, you are recognized. Uh, yun pong sinasabi niyo tungkol po sa ililipat po natin yung agrarian justice delivery function sa Department of Justice. Kasi po yung uh, agrarian justice delivery po ng Department of Agrarian Reform, medyo specialized po kasi talaga yun dahil po ang talagang... Uh, Pinaglilingkuran po natin dito yung mga magsasaka. Ang usapin po dito, ibang-iba po sa procedure po nila sa Department of Justice. Yung specialization po ng mga lawyers natin sa katunayan, most of the lawyers that we have under the Department of Agrarian Reform have been there for the past uh, uh, 30 years. Marami na po sa kanila ang talagang tumanda po dito po sa Agrarian Justice Delivery. Kaya nga po at uh, talaga po sila ang pumupunta sa mga magsasaka. Kung minsan nagkakaroon po sila ng mga hearing sa ilalim ng bangka at uh, talaga pong uh, uh, medyo iba po yung ano yung sistema po ng agrarian justice delivery ng department. Okay. Yeah. Madam Chair, just one final uh, yeah. manifestation. Yeah. So, thank you for sir. your manifestation. We recognize Senator Rexo. Yes, thank you very much. Just to uh, comment on what Senator Marco said earlier, na I will support uh, such a department as well. If you want to call it Department of Agriculture and Rural Development, to be led by a grand reform. I do also have a bill on creating a department of fisheries separate from agriculture dahil nakakaligtaan din yung ating mga mangingisda. May I comment on that? May I comment on that? Thank you. you know, yes, if, please, you, sir, okay. yes. if you divide agriculture, 53% uh, is in crops, uh, 35, 33% is in livestock, poultry, and dairy, and 15% sa fisheries. Para hindi mo naman maja-justify sa livestock, poultry, and dairy that gaka-create ka ng Department of Fisheries, eh, ang liit-liit ng fisheries compared to livestock, poultry, and dairy. Parang, yun lang ang comment ko doon uh, sa yes, idea na yun. Palagi nilang sinasabi yun, but I cannot understand... How can you make a department in the smallest aspect of agriculture when there are yung livestock, poultry, and dairy must be good? Double, double, yeah. 33. Yes. Eh, 15 lang ang yes. fisheries. Yes. Um, I, I, in terms of budget support, ang karamihan talaga napupunta sa rice, coconut. Okay? Yes. Uh, Walang napupunta sa livestock. Okay? Now, wala, wala. in terms of... Oh, in terms but of numbers, we are passing a law on livestock, poultry, and dairy right. development. Uh, and because, I, uh, yeah. Para yes. i-require na bigyan nila yon. Mas malaki pa ang fisheries na fifteen percent kaysa do sa livestock, poultry, and dairy. Correct. 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 That, ang dami din ng mga fishermen natin. Uh, in terms of numbers, man. Uh, Malaki din. Not to mention our uh, uh, sea area. Mas malaki ang karagatan natin kaysa sa lot area natin. And that's why I was saying that there might be a need for a Department of Fisheries. So thank you very much, um, Madam. A number ng fisheries natin, one and a half million. Ang number ng livestock, poultry, dairy, two and a half million. Yes. Yeah, mas malaki rin. <laughs> Kaya oh. nga, mahirap eh. Kaya pag sinasabi nila sa akin, how can I justify that? Eh baka magreklamo naman yung livestock, poultry, and dairy. Kasi mas malaki sila, mas marami sila. 
Tapos mas maliit ang budget nila kasi inaasahan ng gobyerno yung private sector led yung ano. But we have a uh, 65% of our livestock are small livestock farmers. Oh. That is correct. Uh, uh, <laughs> At saka ang Batangas, livestock, hindi yan fisheries. <laughs> Correct. Uh, pareho po. Pareho. Meron din kami fishery at saka livestock. Mas malaki livestock nyo. Kayo at the number one sa livestock. Eh. That is correct. That is correct. At wala okay. support for the national government. Yeah. <laughs> thank you very much. Okay. Thank you. Okay. So, are there any more questions? Uh, Senator Aimee, no more? So, I, I would ask some questions kasi I will be the one to defend your budget so I should know the answer to this question. In your most recent report, it reflects that coconut lands tap the, the land that is yet to be distributed with Region 5, 8, and ARM as the most number of hectares yet to be distributed. What is the reason for this? Parang nahuhuli yung coconut. Why? Uh, can you answer this? Uh, sometimes it's more difficult to really cover uh, uh, lands that are actually planted with coconut, Madam Chair. Uh, because uh, th those uh, lands are actually uh, located in very, very far flung areas, uh, okay. uh, like um, um, mountain areas um, uh, or uh, in, in a very uh, remote areas. And that is the reason why it is quite difficult to cover them. But nonetheless, at this point in time, what we have done is that uh, we have uh, made instructions to the effect that uh, uh, even if these are areas located in far-flung areas or remote areas, we will do our best to really penetrate all these areas so that we will be able to cover the same. A case in point, Madam Senator, uh, like for example, the Arakan Valley. Uh, we were well, able to... The where Valley, is that? Where is North, that? North Cotabato, po. North Cotabato. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Only recently we were able to cover it, but the uh, the process of covering the same started 30 years back, 30 years back, and it was so difficult for us to cover the same uh, because it's really a remote area. And sometimes, uh, well, the peace situation, the peace and order situation in those areas also affect our mobility and our effectivity and efficiency in covering the same because uh, some of our employees and some of those who are... Ba, can I interject? Hindi ba kaya nagkakaroon ng peace and order problem kasi hindi nyo dinidistribute in land? Which is which? <laughs> kasi yun din na reason why may peace and order problem kasi hindi na didistribute yung land. So, uh, sino mauna? Uh, yung matapos yung peace problem, eh, ang pag-solve din ng peace problem is land reform, di ba? Ma'am, simultaneous, simultaneous po yun, Madam Senator, kasi yung iba po kasi, uh, doon po sa mga lugar na yon na mga remote areas, aktibo po yung, uh, kwan, yung ating po mga uh, left-leaning uh, mga kadres po doon. At they are motivating our farmers, sinasabi nila, wag kayong makiisa dyan sa mga land reform na yan. Wala, hindi nila yan may bibigyan sa inyo. Yan po yung ginagawa nila. Kaya kumisan, uncooperative po yung ibang mga magsasaka doon dahil nga po may influence po sila ng kaliwa. At kumisan, ay talagang sila po po mismo yung talagang kumukontra. Only to find out later on na kapag yung mga kasamahan nila, Nakatanggap na po sila ng lupa, na-cover po namin yung mga ibang na-cover namin. Saka lang po sila aangal. Bakit kami hindi nabigyan? Kaya po lalo nagkakagulo. Maybe you should coordinate with our uh, national defense, di ba? Para magtulong kayo. Kasi uh, tingin ko, solution din to sa peace and order problem. Yung pag-distribute, di ba? So maybe you, you should do a MOA with our national defense para... Parang dalawa kayo na tumutulong to solve our peace and order problem. Kasi I think yung distribution will solve our peace and will help in solving our peace and order problem, di ba? Tama po kayo, Madam Senator. Meron na po kami existing MOA po with the DND with regards to the uh, implementation of our Can operation. Can you give me a copy? Para pag may nagtanong nito, ma meron tayong proof na may MOA kayo, di ba? Okay. Opo, opo. At saka oh. hindi lang po yan, uh, kasama po namin sila doon mismo sa distribution din. Para yeah. po makita po ng mga farmers natin at saka yung mga mamamayan natin po doon po sa mga malalayang lugar. 
that the armed forces, which is a part of our government, is actively supporting the distribution of lands to our farmers. Yeah, okay. So, uh, gusto ko lang i-describe nyo yung inyong uh, program and development program for ARBs para lang maintindihan ko na more detailed. Hindi ko na kailangan sagutin ngayon, ibigay nyo lang sa akin yung yung ano, yung uh, write-up ng ano. Kasi sinasabi nyo yung mga ganon, ganon, mga program, but I don't have a detailed uh Uh, ano. So yung nag in charge nitong development nyo ng inyong agrarian reform, gusto ko lang mag-submit siya nung uh, ano ba yung mga programang yon Para pag natanong ako doon, alam ko rin, di ba? Okay. Pagko-comply po kami. Pagko-comply po kami, Madam Senator. Okay. And then another question is, hindi ba hiningi ko sa inyo yung percentage or rather the total number of land reform beneficiary na breakdown by crops, di ba? Binigay nyo na sa akin, di ba? Oo. Binigay nyo na yun eh. Meron ako nun eh. And I'm giving it to uh, Senator Aimee. But I want a percentage. Like uh, in rice, uh, ilan bang rice farmer, ilan ang ARBs dun sa rice, di ba? Kasi nakalagay dito, uh, in rice, uh, let me see. Doon sa rice nyo, parang 900,000 ang ARBs, di ba? O, ilang percentage yun ng total rice farmers? Pwede bang ibigay sa akin? And then, yung inyong uh, uh, coconut, sabi nyo, 690,000 ang ARBs sa coconut. Ilan ba ang total uh, coconut farmers? Ilang percentage ang ARBs? Para may knowledge tayo that out of the rice industry, and I can share it with DA also, that you have to take care of this ARBs in the rice industry. You have to take care of this uh, coconut farmer para sa PCA in the coconut industry. A ano kayo as a percentage of the total, di ba? I think ang pinakamarami sa inyo would be rice, corn, sugar, and uh, uh, rice, uh, coconut, corn, sugar, ang pinakamarami sa inyo. So I want to know if... Uh, If uh, ilan yon as a total of the all the rice farmers, okay? Pe, makisubmit nyo na lang. You don't have to answer now. Oo. Opo, Madam Chairman, we will submit. And then, uh, doon sa development program nyo, ilan ba binibigay ng percentage nyo sa rice? Ilan ang binibigay nyo sa corn? Ilan ang binibigay nyo sa coconut at saka sa sugar? Para aalsin na natin yon at ititira na lang doon. Ang wala sa yung description ng other crops eh hindi niyo nilagay kasi malaki din eh 250,000 tapos maraming pal bakal palagay ko na andito yung onion eh kasi yung onion malaki din yun eh. Oo. Sa description niyo of other crops eh may malaking lugar eh na other crops eh. Ah, teka babasahin ko ha. Like, uh, ang malalaking lugar sa other crops is car, and then region 2, uh, region 9, and region 12, and region 13. Malalaki eh. Yun. Kung reviewin mo itong inyong other crops, may malalaki. Hindi bali yung maliliit, pero yung malalaki eh. I-determine natin kung sino yun para matulungan natin yun. Kasi gusto ko, yung rice, yung coconut, yung corn, at sugar cane, i-coordinate ko na lang sa DA. Tapos, i-focus nyo yung tulong nyo dito sa rubber, banana, and other crops. May mga other crops eh, na malalaki eh, as I mentioned. Gusto ko malaman kung ano ba yung other crop na malaki ng region 12, region 13, region 10, region uh, 3, at region 1. Ano ba yung nasa region 1 na himi na malaki? Uh, Senator Aimee. Can I ask Senator Aimee? Aimee, you're on mute. Aimee. Senator Aimee. Senator Aimee. Ay, ay. Senator Aimee. 
I just want to know, maybe Senator Aimee will have an idea what is the major crop other than this major crop in Ilocos. Garlic ba yun? Hindi siya tayo eh, hindi siya tayo. Anyway, I will call her name. Yeah. Kasi may major crop sa Region 1 eh. Other than the major crops, uh, other crops. Ano tingin mo yun? Secretary, in the other crops, can you find out what is the major there? Kasi may mga region na ang laki ng other crops eh. Okay. Uh, can you answer now? What, what I'm yeah, no, no, no. You can just research. I'm curious. Okay. Para okay. we will know how to help them. Kasi ang matitira sa inyo, rubber, banana, and other crops. Kasi yung, yung talagang apat na yun, may major program doon ng DA. I want you to take advantage of that. Oo. We will comply. So, yeah. Because uh, if you want to ask me for additional budget, I would like to give it to split. Okay po. Kasi okay, sabi po. ni, tama naman, we all agree, na ang inyong major accomplishment will depend on how, ma how many titles you have distributed or ni land reform nyo at how many titles, how many of the collective CLOAS you have converted into individual CLOAS. Kasi ting tingin ko yun ang pinaka-importante sa mga uh, land reform places natin in the Philippines. As Senator Recto said, I agree with him. So if ever, yung ating development I will connect you with DA para yung major crops nyo, ibigay nyo na sa DA. Ang laki-laki ng budget na binigay sa DA dyan by legislation. So mag-focus na lang kayo dun sa mga minor na naandito. Na wala kaming legislation on that like rubber, banana, and yung other crops. Kasi may mga region na malaki din yung other crops nila eh. That's why I'm asking uh, Senator Aimee, ano ba yung mga other crops na yun? I know in Region 3... Region 3 is listed here. I know that's onion. Ang second crop nila, onion talaga. They are the biggest producer of onions in the Philippines. So, it, gusto ko malaman kung yung ARBs nyo, producer ng onions. And then, uh, ang malaki rin dito is uh, Region 10. Region 10 is uh, bukid nun. Diba? Yan ang bukid nun at saka misamis oriental. Uh, malaki sila. Malaki sila sa rice. Malaki sila sa sugar. I think this is fruits ba to? And then uh, 11. 11 baka cacao to eh. They are the biggest producer of cacao in the, in the Philippines. 80% of cacao comes from 11. And then uh, region 12 also. I don't know. Region 12 is uh, baka ito yung uh, we'll see. The fruits. Okay, din ang region 12 sa fruits. I, I want to know. I want to understand why these uh, areas are bigger in other crops. Ano yung crops na yun? Baka may, ano, hindi naman ganun kalaki pero malaki rin. Okay? So, yeah. so I want you to give me a list of the uh, how much your of your budget is allotted to these major crops? Para maidala natin yan dun sa other uses, okay? And I guess we have to talk with the other senators. I think we have, uh, we'll see yung budget nyo sa split. Okay, thank you very much. Oh, maraming salamat. And with this, I'm adjourning this. Uh, if there are any, any no more questions, uh, the committee now considered is submitted for plenary consideration and approval the budget of the Department of Agrarian Reform.
Maraming okay. salamat po, Madam Chair. Maraming maraming salamat po. And I want to thank the other people which I did not recognize who came here. Uh, Nahule, uh, Head Executive Assistant Attorney Juan Lorenzo Maria Castriciones, under USEC for Legal Affairs, Attorney Luis Mendra Manrado Pagulayan, and uh, an Undersecretary for Foreign Assisted and Special Projects, Bernie Cruz, uh, Assistant Secretary for Support Services, Attorney Milagros Isabel Cristobal, Assistant Secretary for Foreign Assisted and Special Projects, Mr. Ubaldo Sajarin Jr., uh, kilala ko yata yun. Ang second na pala, Nandar, <laughs> used to work with me. Di ba, Iho? Do you used to work with me, Asek Sajarin? In the bank? In the bank, oh. Mute ka, mute ka. Uh, dati ka nagtatrabaho sa akin, di ba? Sa banko? Okay, <laughs> sige. I used to manage a bank. He used to work with me, okay? <laughs> and, uh, Director for Internal Audit Division, Alexander Alimudin Ali, and Director for Administrative Service, Attorney Primo Lara, and Technical Support Staff, uh, Lancer Francis Eugene Donato, okay? Under Secretary for Special Concern, Attorney Karim Panumpang, uh, Assistant Secretary for Policy, Planning, and Research, Attorney Paolo Justino Chiazon, Director for Presidential Agrarian Reform Council Secretariat, James Arsenio Ponce, and Director for Public Assistance and Media Relations Service, Cleon Lester Chavez, Director for Management Information System, Nestor C. Bayonete, Director for External Affairs and Relations Service, Cupido Jerry Asuncion, Director for Legal Service, Attorney Marvin Bernal, and Director for Project Management Service, Maria Celerina Apable. And the Adjudication Board, Board Member 3, Attorney Rolando Cua. Board Member 3, Attorney Annabel Dandasan, Juan Dasan. And Executive Director for DAR Adjudication Board, Secretariat Attorney Roland C. Manalaysay. And for Regional Director, SCAR Attorney Eugene Foliante. Uh, Region 10, Attorney Merlita Kapinpuyan, and Region 11, Joseph H. Aurelia. And the technical administrative staff, ter technical support staff, uh, Jerry Mine Policarpio, Chief of Budget Division, Maria Cristina Dagdag, Data Controller, June Malagayo. Malagayo. Okay, thank you very much for coming. And I guess uh, since you have uh, so many uh, uh, regional directors here, make it, maybe you can ask them what is that uh, other crops na major dun sa mga region na nakita ko. Ha? Maybe they can tell you what are those other crops. I want to know para kung major crop talaga sa area, like in Region 3, onions, maybe we should help them. Okay? Thank you yes, very Papa. much and a pleasant good morning to all of you. Marami pong salamat. Okay. Yes, salamat po, Madam Chair. Marami, marami salamat po. Okay.